You are looking live at one of the great scenes in all of college football. It's an ACC neighborhood battle as Clemson welcomes Georgia Tech to Death Valley. 81,000 on hand as we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger, along with my partner, Gary Danielson. And Gary, what a wonderful contrast and matchup of quarterbacks here tonight. It really is, Brent. You know, we, we all love college football for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the color, the bands, these type of rivalries, intersectional, all across the country. But tonight game kind of typifies why I love college football. The contrast of the two quarterbacks. This game with Charlie Whitehurst and Reggie Ball shows you that different offenses in college football with variety give you different ways to win. Both brilliant guys, different offenses, different coaches doing it, do it tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. There are so many traditions here at Clemson. One of them, the Tigers roll down the hill. They're boarding the bus to make the journey around the stadium. We'll see them come down the hill. Right now, we go to John Saunders. Moments ago, the Tigers arrived. CC and uh, Jack Root, we've got some injury question marks here tonight. Yeah, Brent, if you're looking for an X factor tonight for Georgia Tech, it may be how a couple of players that thought they were going to be in the two deep find themselves starting. There are three players where there's injuries and question marks. Two for Georgia Tech, Eric Henderson and Nate Curry. They will not dress. But for for Clemson, Dwayne Coleman, their outstanding tailback, he may or may not play. We'll just have to stay tuned. All right, Jack. Wayne Coleman did suit up. He worked out, and uh, the coin toss was won by Georgia Tech, and they defer like almost every team that we're around to college football now. So with the ball on the tee, Kyle Belcher, number 16, will kick it off, and the Tigers moving from right to left will have some serious speed back there, and Reese Curry in Justin Miller. This is major league speed, and Tech has to be aware of it. This is Curry from a yard in the end zone. Searches for daylight and brings some of that wonderful speed out to the 38 yard line. And now the junior quarterback from Duluth, Georgia, Charlie Whitehurst. And yes, the scouts are keeping an eye on him, even though he's a junior. And of course, he has the breeding. His daddy, David, played with the Green Bay Packers in the National Football League. He certainly has NFL size, poise, and we will see how it unfolds here tonight. He was very poised late against Wake Forest, although he did struggle somewhat in the second half with two costly interceptions. But Clemson beating Wake 1 0 in the conference, end around, and here comes Stuckey. The all purpose back throws it, the former quarterback incomplete down the field. So Stuckey. Going deep to Kelvin Brown, we check in on the Clemson backs and receivers. Let's talk about the running game. It's struggled. Yusuf Kelly has to carry the load. Only 57 yards, although he did score a big touchdown. He could slip on. He's a pretty good receiver. Now, seven knockdown blocks by center Tommy Sharp. That's a bunch for a center. So he anchors what is a line that has been rebuilt and remade here with Whitehurst back in the gun on second and ten in trouble throws it away it'll be third and ten against this Georgia Tech defense and Jack of course told you the story Adam Oliver moves in to start number 42 in place of Henderson Travis Parker missed a game now a year ago Jarris Wilkinson was a defensive end coach who said he graded out well last week James Butler, the free safety, number 22, is an All-American candidate for the Ramblin' Wreck, and he's a good one. Third down and 10. Now you can see how they signal the plays. A dummy count at the line. Sweeney signals it in. They get it in late now, and Whitehurst will take the snap. The 25-second clock running down. Beautiful catch at the 41-yard line that time by Kelvin Grant 
the big sophomore from Camden, South Carolina, who yanked down that tying two-point conversion against Wake Forest. The 22-yard gain and a first down. Georgia Tech will know, and like you should know watching this, that if Charlie Whitehurst gets time to throw the ball against any secondary, including this one, he's just too accurate and too good. Goes in, goes out, plenty of time. Receivers will catch that ball at this level, and that quarterback will put it on target. Now Georgia Tech has shown the base 4-3. Sweeney changes up the play from the sideline. Tech now adjusts, sends a backer. He's picked up. The running play is stuffed that time by Jerris Wilkinson, the linebacker we told you about. He's from Oakland, California. Georgia Tech has the benefit of their first game against Samford playing the same offense. Maybe not the skill level, but at least they got used to lining up four wide receivers, quarterback signaling in play, so they had maybe a dress rehearsal for this game. Curry is to the left of Whitehurst here on second down and 10. Now after the dummy signal, and sometimes they will snap it, although not frequently. Their tendency is to look over and adjust after they see the defensive personnel signal more than any team in college football from the sideline. Curry takes the quick hit out of bounds across the 40-yard line. And uh, we asked Whitehurst, Jack Root was in there and interviewed him, and uh, asked him what he wanted to accomplish early. And see, see how it works. But uh, you, know, you try to score in every play. So, uh, you know, it, it doesn't always happen, but you know, you're not going to score in every drive. But that, that's our, that's our goal offensively. Whitehurst is back now on a third down. You can see him looking over to the sideline. Now he will call it off at the line of scrimmage. Handles the low snap. Easily now he'll take off. Can he get the first down? He'll throw on the run and in the air, out of bounds. Incomplete. Stuckey made the catch on the far sideline, but he was out of bounds. And Whitehurst, I think you saw, as we see now, a Georgia Tech player, Dennis Davis, the uh, senior corner from New Jersey, shaken up on that play. And uh, looks like he may have injured just above that wrist area on the uh, right arm. One of the things you'll see with Whiters as he comes out, it looks like already he's developed a communication sense with Stuckey. Now that makes sense. They both were quarterbacks last year, were in meetings together, and now he feels confident in the scrambling situation to look for number two. Tommy Bowden has made his decision. They'll go on fourth down. Quick kick by Whitehurst. A beautiful quick kick. And it will be down at the 12-yard line. Wasn't that a beautiful play? Not everybody by surprise. That's his first career punt here at Clemson. And it was a beauty. Wouldn't it be called his first career pooch? Because <laughs> it was just like you draw it up. Both teams, though, I think satisfied with the first try. So here comes Bridgie Ball. A man from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And last week he had a dandy. He's a sophomore, moved into that role. Tough spot for a true freshman. Now they say he's much improved as a decision maker. Hands it to P.J. Daniels, ACC's leading rusher from a year ago. Bolts out to the 23-yard line and a first down before Ty Hill makes the stop here, this Georgia Tech. Backs and receivers, you see P.J. Daniels. He is a walk-on, folks, hard to believe. And last week, 169 yards rushing, scored two touchdowns on the ground and another in the air. The ringleader of this offensive line is Andy Tidwell Neal, a young man from Minnesota, very close with Reggie Ball. They have a terrific relationship. They're going to bring the chains out to uh, measure this one. I thought at first look that it was a first down, but uh, we'll wait here for the official signal tonight our referee and he's a good one Ron Cherry first down if you haven't watched PJ Daniels yet this year you may wonder if it's the same guy I saw him last year and then I watched the opening tape and he's added wrinkles a little bit of a flex to his game a little movement and he's much better than he was a year ago he was a bruiser last year almost seeking contact now he has the ability to make people miss Three wide to the left side. Daniels again. And Hill. They're all everything linebacker. 
Helping bring him down now for Clemson as you take a look at their defensive front. Fountain, Tate, Coleman, and Bennett line up along the front. But the key man is this linebacker, number 43. Remember that number. Leroy Hill, Butkus Award candidate all over the field against Wake Forest. And you don't find two better corners in the ACC than Ty Hill and Justin Miller. Serious speed, serious returnability with Justin Miller, who hauled a punt back for a touchdown last week against Wake Forest. Second down and five. Empty backfield for Reggie. Has time. Hits that sideline. First down pass. Put it right on the mark with a uh, beautiful throw to LeVon Thomas, the senior. I don't think we should be surprised anymore, Brent, about true freshmen being impact players in college football. We saw it with Larry Fitzgerald last year with Reggie Ball. I think more and more kids now realize in high school that if they do their work, they lift weights, and they prepare themselves, if they're mentally ready to handle the game, Physically, there's many more kids that can do it than ever before. And I tell you, this LeVon Thomas is a force in college football already in his second game. So far, a pretty good looking drive by Reggie and Georgia Tech. Motion from the receiver, Chan Gailey. Here comes Daniels running out of it for a couple of yards. When you watch this offense, you're reminded of the days that Chan Gailey spent at the National Football League. You see motion. You see H-back looks. You see the things that the fellows use on Sunday as we check in with Jack Aru. Well, Gary, you were talking about that kind of finesse moves that all of a sudden P.J. is introduced to his game. He did that by studying his backup. Not film of his performance, but film of his backup. Uh, Chris Woods, who was more of a finesse player, he said in the offseason, I didn't want to learn about me. I wanted to learn what made Chris special. And now P.J. has introduced that to his game. Jack, we just saw Leroy Hill come off the field for the defense down there with a little bit of a arm injury. And uh, we certainly hope that that is not serious down below. Draw play, Reggie, outstanding runner, beautiful play for a first down midfield. And Reggie steps it out of bounds across the 45-yard line. That's a 21-yard run by the quarterback. This is what you talk about, what I was talking about in the open, just the beauty of having different types of quarterback styles. Here you got Chan Gailey, who probably would have liked to have recruited the dropback passer, but he gets Reggie Ball, and he says, you know what, I'm going to tailor my offense to what Reggie can do, quarterback draw. You know, Clemson could have watched all the film they wanted of last week's game for Georgia Tech. Chan Gailey didn't show anything in that game. You have a complete different offense with Reggie Ball here tonight. One time quarterback, the Florida Gators. There's a draw play, and Clemson not giving much ground up front. In fact, uh, Georgia Tech throwing for a loss that time. Anthony Waters, the linebacker from Lakeview, South Carolina, stepped well, in. Well, when Clemson made their run last year and their 4 0 run at the end of the year, beating a number three Florida State and ended up being te beating Tennessee. They did it by playing rush defense at the end of the year, and that'll be the key. Georgia Tech, if they can run the ball with P.J. Daniels and Reggie Ball, it'll be tough for this great secondary in Clemson to take hold of this game. Watch it. If Georgia Tech can run, that'll be bad news for Clemson. Calvin Johnson, the Ballyhood freshman, is off to the right. Three wide receivers line up. He would be their slot man. Reggie's looking in that direction, taking off. And that might be, nope, no flag. I thought for just a moment that Pew, the senior free safety, had hit the receiver too quickly. But the official was right there and said, no, Bilbo was, uh, he was fair game at that moment. I thought the ball was behind Bilbo, and I think it was a pretty good call. I don't think it was catchable, and uh, Pew had to make a run at Bilbo, and that's what happened. Now Hill has returned. So number 43 with a wrap on the arm has returned for Clemson. He's back on the field. He's their leading tackler. He is their main defensive presence, number 43. He's a great rusher, too. Straight back. Reggie's in trouble. And down at the 46-yard line. So a good-looking drive stalls for Tech. And they'll be forced to punt. I think it was Jamison, number 52, the backup defensive end that got it. He's in there, made the play. Five-man rush from John Levette, the defensive coordinator, to force Reggie Ball out of that pocket. Here's Ben Arn. And Miller, who hauled one back against Wake Forest. Awaits the return. And what a good-looking punt this is. 
on into the end zone and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. High up into the lights. So underway here in Clemson, South Carolina. And we're scoring. They love the Tigers here in Clemson, let me tell you that. Whitehurst on that quick inside handoff and the first out near the 30-yard line on that first and 10 from the 20. Kyle Brownie who scored the winning touchdown in overtime against Wake, the junior from Union, South Carolina. A little, that handoff. A little different runner from Yusef Kelly. You can see a much quicker hitter and a better receiver than Kelly is. Or maybe a better speed receiver. Kelly catches the ball fa fine, but not as quick. Last year it was easy in Atlanta for this Clemson team. They beat them 39 to three. Just the uh, the biggest win in this series. Well, you've got to go all the way back to the early 1900s as Whitehurst goes ahead. But you know, when you talk about revenge in college football, you're always wondering how a coach uses it. And we asked Chan Gailey that exact question the other day. Revenge doesn't last but about one to two minutes into the ball game. The, what you're showing them the film for is to motivate them to prepare during the course of the week. And that's what we did. And that's what they hope will pay off for them here tonight. They sit in that base defense of that four-man defensive front. Whitehurst moves up to call the play. Now the linebackers led by Reese will readjust and basically there are where they started. Whitehurst on a beautiful inside handoff play that time. And, uh, the same running back coming forward, Browning, the uh, junior. You know, Gary, last week, Clemson simply could not run the field. Right, that's what I want to talk about. If you look at this play right here, Brent, this is going to be classified as a pass play because Charlie backs up and flips it for, forward. But for all intents and purposes, it's a running play. Now, if you took the 83 yards in running and added on a little bit of the shovel passing, I think Clemson's stats would be a bit better in the running game. So we can, we can watch that all game. That really is a run, if you ask me. This time he fakes off of it. Fires to an open man. Got him on the break. Now and Curry out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. James Butler, the free safety, over on coverage. Gets him out of bounds. But there's some of that serious, serious track speed we're talking about. Serious speed. Watch him go here. The safety gets held by the fake. Now watch this throw. This is like passing the baton or the way the U.S. would like to pass the baton in the Olympics. They don't always do it that well. That was a perfect throw. That's that 40. is two, what is it, 10.29 speed in the 100 meter, and he's learning to catch the football. That is a serious threat in college football. 34 yards, gives Whitehurst 73 already for the game. The scoreless, but a scoring opportunity here inside the 25-yard line. And flags and a whistle. Both teams are still playing a cat and mouse game with the snap count. Georgia Tech would like to hide their defense. Clemson is trying to quick snap a bit. Number 75, five yard penalty. Which makes it first and 15 after the false start penalty. You see it, the offensive linemen really don't care what's going on up front. They're going to take the call from Charlie Whitehurst. They get in their stance. Now, Charlie will flick his foot up or down. That'll either be a live signal or not. And then the offensive lineman will listen for the call. In this case, it was live. So Duke's cost him the five throw into traffic that time. Makes it second down and 15. So a reminder now, next Saturday, they've got a terrific doubleheader. Nebraska lost to Southern Miss, and they'll be in Pittsburgh on high noon next Saturday. And then following that, Ohio State battled, pulled it out against Marshall. They played North Carolina State. That's a rematch of a classic from a year ago. Oregon, well, the Pac-10, goes down to play Oklahoma of the Big 12 down in Norman. So that's your doubleheader next week. Second down of 15 for Whitehurst. He's checked over at the sideline. Full left. Fire complete. And out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. 
Davis Bayham, the junior from New Orleans, with his first catch. You know, Gary, in watching the adjustments that are being made right here, it almost strikes me that Georgia Tech has said, "Or you moving around and looking at the sidelines, whatever you're going to do, they're not making many shifts." Yeah, they're after. they're in a base defense now. They're just playing zone against the formations. Get as wide as the widest guy, as deep as the deepest guy, and just play your zone. But this ain't going to work against a quarterback that throws this accurately. Sooner or later in this football game, Georgia Tech's going to get tired of giving up these short passes. They're going to move up, start blitzing, and then that little footwork will start to work. Third and six. No pressure. End zone. Dropped to the back of the end zone. Would have been a tough catch, but you could see back there. And Bam had a shot at it. Yeah, Curtis, I mean, can you throw a football any better than this, Brent? We saw Charlie Whitehurst last year. You can play great defense, but a good route and a perfect throw beats a defense. Now watch this throw. This should be six points. You can't throw it any better than that. Jet, that should be caught. That's a Tom Brady type pass if I ever saw it. 36-yard field goal attempt by Stephen Furr. So we are still scoreless. There's two drives, stall for Tech and Clemson. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football is brought to you by the next Ford Super Duty, tougher, stronger, smarter. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You look down from high above. Crowd in excess of 80,000, most of whom were on here tonight at Death Valley. Much of their beloved Tigers take on an old, old rival from nearby Atlanta. Ramblin' Rick at Georgia Tech. The slot man now is LeVon Thomas for number one Reggie Ball, the sophomore quarterback from Stone Mountain. Daniels bursts. Good looking running back as he is. approaches the line of scrimmage. Hits it hard to the 26 yard line and Reese Fountain there defensively. That's Justin Miller. We're going to be watching Justin Miller all night. Number nine, a fabulous football player for Clemson. Freshman All American two years. A little bit of off year last year. His first year he had eight interceptions. Recommitted himself. Last week he was uh, great with a punt return and all over in coverage. We're going to track him, how many touches he gets, how many times he's thrown at, how many knockdowns he gets all night on our performance track. Bilbo is the slot man over to the right side. They flex the tight end. But again, they prefer to run Daniels for a first down to the 31 yard line. Sampson makes the stop. We check in down below with Jack. Brent, I asked Chan Gailey what the biggest challenge was coming into Death Valley, and he said, I can't single it down to one. He said, in fact, it's two. He said, first of all, what I've got to do is try and quiet the crowd. I think he's already done that. Second of all, I've got to convince my team that they can survive the surge that a home team generally experiences when they play at home. That missed field goal may have just done that for Tech. Not exactly. That and the drop pass. Reggie now trying to get the corner himself. Out think, of bounds at the 35-yard line. I think that was a busted play. I don't. I don't think P.J. Daniels knew what Reggie Ball was doing that time. It was a, probably a, a, a check play, but it, from here it looked like a busted play and an effective busted play. Three or four times a game, Reggie Ball will go deep to Levon Thomas, just throwing it up like a Plexico Burris pass deep in the corner. Randy Moss where they'll get a jump ball and see if number seven can catch the ball. And just to show them that the defense can't crowd the line of scrimmage and take away that running game. Second down and five. Reggie fires, got the first down near midfield as Bilbo picks it up. And, uh, you know, there's another battle of these two states, South Carolina and Georgia. And John Saunders, what's going on with that one? Yeah, John and uh, Lou Holtz in South Carolina ran out to an early lead in that game, so the and the Dogs are battling back. I think it's yeah, real happy. We got an injured player right down here, and uh, we hope that Semafia is going to be okay. Just shaking up on that play. 
But to remind you that the aerial coverage and you know, aren't these great shots. And they're courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship. Bloomin' Onion One. The Outback Steakhouse specializes in college football. And we'll be back in just a moment. Well, uh, Clemson's Travis Pugh was the injured player. And the senior walked off under his own power. So uh, we hope that he'll be back. Meanwhile, Mons. The junior from Jacksonville, Florida, checks in for him. Scoreless here, six minutes to go in the opening quarter. Georgia Tech with the football, a first down near midfield. Young Reggie Ball firing to the near sideline, incomplete. He kind of underthrew his man that time. Calvin Johnson, the talented freshman, was his target for the first time tonight as we approach the half hour and you look down on our scene here in Clemson, South Carolina. The Tigers in a rambling wreck, an ACC conference game. Clemson 1 0. The only team unbeaten except Miami and that great rally. You almost forget for just a moment that uh, Miami is now an <laughs> ACC member moving over from the Big East. That game last night counted big time against Florida State. Second down and 10. Quarterback draw. Reggie sprints for a first down to the 40-yard line. And, you know, we had an opportunity to chat with the young man. Did we enjoy that? And we asked Reggie what he wanted to accomplish early in this game. As an offense, you want to get first downs. But personally, I once you get that first lick, once you get hit that one good time, I mean, you're actually in the game. You're feeling the game, and uh, you can settle down a little bit. The jitters are gone. And uh, he's taking that good lick now, and he's ready to go. Yeah, he, he is so poised. When you watch him on the field, he is in total control of this offense. A year has helped him. He was good last year, and now he's real comfortable. Here's Daniels to the middle for three yards. And uh, John Saunders, USC, an interesting game against Colorado State. What's happening out west? John, and of course, USC, one of those teams with a chance to make it all the way to the FedEx Orange Bowl and the national championship game. They're very, very highly touted this year. Ton of time. Second down and seven for Georgia Tech against Clemson. Deep drop, gonna fire for the end zone. High rainbow pass. Touchdown! That's one of them. Oh, baby, Calvin Johnson, the freshman we've been hearing so much about. 37 yards, he comes down with the rainbow. And he was very, very well covered that time. Ty Hill, he too possesses serious speed, and Calvin goes and gets it, Garrett. I told you they were gonna throw about three or four of these a game to this guy. They believe he has Randy Moss type ability to go get the ball. A freshman goes and gets it, and just, that's an easy six, and now seven points. Mercy, what a play that was as Travis Bell adds the extra point. We've got to see an ISO of this catch in the end zone here by the freshman. The thought here is you have a big, talented receiver against a smaller, talented defensive back. Your receiver is more comfortable catching the ball. That ball was deflected, too. Hill got his almost wrist or, or elbow on that ball, and he still catches it. That's the fear when you have one of those talented guys outside, and now you'll see the safety have to go over there and help on him, and it will open up the whole field. Folks, Hill was doing a great job on it. There yep. was a little contact coming down the field. He was right with him with his speed. Somehow Johnson just maintained his focus in the end zone, and like Gary told you, I think Hill had a hand on the football as he grabbed it. Told you they were going to throw three or four of those. Now they might throw more. And I, I'll tell you what's going to happen here now. Clemson will have to alter their thinking. It's tough to give up 37-yard cheap throws. That was just a rainbow right there. What I did like what Reggie Ball did is he put it in the field for his guy to get it. You see so many quarterbacks toss that out the back of the end zone. He put it there and said, go get it or knock it down and save me. Nice play. On the tee for Belcher. A seven-point lead for Georgia Tech. And they are, we're an underdog coming into this game tonight. Clemson drops an easy one, and then Georgia Tech makes a tough catch to get their seven. That was a highlight real play right there. And here's Miller. Slips down at the 
16 yard line. Well, nearby, we've got a little Monday nighter coming your way on ABC. Brett Favre and the Packers will take on the Carolina Panthers Monday night football, 9 Eastern. Is it just me, or does everyone tend to overlook the Panthers who made it all the way to the Super Bowl and had a wonderful comeback against New England before coming up? Sure. Do you get that feeling that they're underrated again? Yeah, the, the, everyone's talking New England right now, aren't they? Yeah, I, I, Panthers are going to have to show they can keep doing it, but they got great defense. That defense don't go away, does it? No. Yeah, I... Very, very cool looking football team. As, uh, Reggie Merrill checks in as the running back for Clemson. Bolts free, and he'll get a few more carries. That's a 12-yard gain, and uh, what's the situation with Pew uh, was helped off, Jack and Ruth? Yeah, Brent, one of the valuable members of that secondary for Clemson bruised his ribs, so what they did is they ran into the locker room, and they found a flak jacket. They put it beneath his jersey, and now it will hopefully protect his ribs. He has been cleared to return to play. First and 10, and Whitehurst checks over to the sideline for the... Uh, the change and it's just not affecting the Georgia Tech defense. I mean, it's well, okay. they, they have to simplify though, Brad. They, they they can't disguise. They have to take that first one. Swing pass and uh, ridden out of bounds at the 35. They have to take that first. And, uh, they fake. Get into it. Yeah, they did. Flag. They did. They get into it on that uh, far side over there. Chris Reese, the linebacker number 18, was mixing it up with Merriweather. I don't know if Reese stumbled or not, but his momentum carried him in on the play, and you're going to catch 15 yards on this. Watch Reese. He hits him, he drives him, and then he kind of loses his balance and keeps pushing him in. They're going to call that every time. you got to put your hands up in the air as if you're not trying to do it. It's a silly play by Reese. Now Landry was the other player on the defensive. 18 on the defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. Reese is a very valuable player to Georgia Tech. They don't substitute a lot. He was a former strong safety that's moved the linebacker and gives them that ability to have a, a safety on the field yet play like a linebacker. First down for the Tigers at midfield. Whitehurst under center. And Merriweather is stuffed at the line. So second down and long, and again, the running game is a struggle. Yeah, well, Michael Kane ha has said that he, he really was dedicated to trying to balance out that running game. But when you watch this team play right here, especially against Georgia Tech, the, the rush defense for Georgia Tech was one of the strengths of their football team last year. I don't know if Georgia Tech has the manpower to line up in I formation and run the ball. Well, the Georgia Tech is out rushing them 58 to 22 right now. Right. Total yards are pretty close, 114 to 108, reflecting Whitehurst's success through the air. But Clemson without any points right now, and the 318 to go in the opening quarter. And Merriweather couldn't get anything on that run, and it will be third and long. Well, the temptation must be very tough calling plays when you have a quarterback like Reggie Ball who can throw the ball accurately, or like Charlie Whitehurst right here where you know pretty much every play, the matchup for a Tommy Bowden team is probably the best matchup is to throw the ball. He's your best player, and let him throw it is probably the best thing you can do. Curry and Stuckey. Curry goes up, and ball was thrown a little bit too high that time. Landry, reading the play, came crashing in from the safety spot that time, and Clemson forced to punt. Gary, I guess my question to you is this. And it came from our producer, Bob Goodrich, who played a little football down there. <laughs> How many more plays could Clemson run in a game if they didn't do that? Well, I don't think the, the time, the number of plays is, is any factor, whether you're huddling or not. I mean, it would take more time to huddle than to walk up there and snap the ball like that. So it's the same number of plays. It's just how you attack it. And we'll have to watch how far that 25-second point goes now. There is the, uh, the punt by Chasen. Fair catch signal for him to go on the end zone and come out on the uh, on the 20 yard line. And of course, we had the uh, quarterback comparison at the top of the broadcast. Reggie three of five, Whitehurst six of 11, and uh, Reggie Ball. Remember, he's got the biggest throw of the game. That's why yards sometimes can be so misleading. How many times have you picked up your Monday paper, you played fantasy football in the NFL, your quarterback throws for 300 yards, you're really excited about that, but his team loses a game. And, uh, that's, a, that's a stat that you see over and over again. 
Number of yards per pass attempt. That's what you want to look for when you're talking about quarterbacks. First down and 10. Reggie Ball, straight back. Fires, got Johnson again. Oh my, what a receiver he's going to be. Unbelievable. Took it in stride over the shoulder across midfield. This is a true freshman. One of the most highly recruited wide receivers in the nation. Has scored a wonderful touchdown here tonight. And now his second grab. And he was working against Calvin Johnson. Yeah, and that was a perfect throw. Dropped right in over the outside shoulder that time. Calvin Johnson made the play. And it was right there, a perfect throw to the outside. I'll tell you what, I think Larry Fitzgerald has set a new standard in college football. People saw what he did his freshman year and saw that when you throw the ball up in the air to a great player like that, he's going to make the catches. Long reach now to P.J. Falls forward again, doesn't he? Every time, a strong runner like that. P.J. Daniels, how about that? Brent talked about it at the beginning. A walk-on. Not, not a, a preferred walk-on. This guy started out as seventh team tailback on this team. Nobody even knew about him. And just, you know, time after time in practice showed that he could do it, and all of a sudden, He's the starting tailback in the ACC leading rusher. Weakness for Calvin. That's contact. <laughs> back we in. found Believe one. Maybe he'll be on the field soon. Here comes Dan. Just stumbled just a bit as he approached the hole. But I see three really good looking football players here for Georgia Tech in the early going. Number one starts with the quarterback, the poise. And, uh, and then Calvin Johnson's touchdown earlier in the game. Then there was Daniels, who exploded last week. know that this was against Vision one double A opponent but he covers a lot of ground hits a hole with authority and uh, Georgia Tech beating it by seven wants to talk about it like that. they're going to take a timeout so they will uh, they will before this this big third down play coming up here look what Chan Gailey has established so far for Georgia Tech He's established the deep pass that they'll go up top at any time. The running, tough running game, and the quarterback draw any time he wants it. That's a perfect start for Georgia Tech. And, uh, Gary will come uh, right back after this break. Well, those Georgia Tech fans who have traveled over here to watch this game from Atlanta, they've got to be excited watching their team. Of course, there are the many more back in Atlanta, I guess, of all the major cities in the country. Uh, no one uh, loves college football any better than the city of Atlanta. This Columbus, Ohio, is being in that grouping that you go down over to Texas, and some of those cities down there. But Atlanta is always a very, very special place to come for college football. They love the dogs and the Rambler Wreck and uh, all the other teams in the SEC. A whole lot of alums, I'm sure, have parties down there together. People are watching this game and, and enjoying it. Third down now from Reggie. Crowd trying to come alive. Reggie took a deep drop. On a fire far side. Got it first down at the 20 yard line. And Bilbo was working on that far side. That is a 21 yard gain. Bilbo, a former quarterback, has made the commitment to play in a wide receiver. Was it Bob? Well, let's take a look at this. It's just a flag They're route to the outside. Back. Let's see. Perfectly thrown ball again. They're We're shielded here. There was an overrule, I believe, on this. Here's a good look at it right here. Look at this one. Does he catch it? He's got it. Boy, I think he's got that ball. That's a good catch right there. He dropped it right late, now, but he had it. Oh, I fudge. He's the right. safety might have been knocking the ball out of his hands, and uh, Chan protesting. The issue was the hand, and, and Chan cannot believe it. I don't blame him. He said him. he had the ball, got out of bounds. Are you kidding me? And now it's fourth down, and now they've got a punt. He had that ball caught. That, that is a, a big decision. And that last angle, we want to take one more look at it. And this time, again, as a beautiful high punt. This good-looking young punter right here. Can they down it inside the five? Uh, they cannot. Had a crack at it. Should have caught it in the air or taken a, a shot at it. When you take a look at this, Watch the relationship of the defender's left hand and the ball. One of the officials 
overrode the catch call. Take a look at this. Ball in his hand, has it there, not bobbling. Now it comes out right there. I think Chan was right. I think that's a good catch. Perfect throw. And they called the ball late coming out. It looked like the head linesman coming down from Chan's side actually had the overrule in that situation. Regardless, Whitehurst and Clemson has the football coming back to work. So they shift back in now yeah. to Yusef Kelly. This kind of kills me. Clemson fans right here start booing because they ran the ball. Now, these are the same fans that call the talk shows and say, you know what, we don't run the ball. We're never going to be able to be a good run. we got a winning team. So, that, you know, you got to run the ball. You have to call a few runs. That's what goes with it. What would American football be without <laughs> second guessing and talk radio? What was it before wouldn't. talk radio? Well, there was still second guessing. <laughs> That's right. You just went down to the pub and told your buddy. <laughs> Here's Whitehurst now, under center, got an open man. Beautiful. Out to midfield right now, Ben Hall, the tight end from Welford, South Carolina. Ben, you couldn't get any more open than Ben Hall was on this, on this play. Another injured player, by the way, for Georgia Tech on the field. The lie formation fake, right down the middle. Whitehurst didn't even have to throw a great pass on this one. An injured player down. We we look now at Whitehurst, what he's done. He's thrown for over 100 yards here. Seven of 12. And the total yards, Clemson with 137, Georgia Tech with 153. We'll take a short break. That is uh, injured uh, junior corner Ruben Houston from Peachtree City, Georgia. And uh, he walks off from his own power, so obviously uh, he figures to be back in this game. Now. First down for Clemson. And... Uh, Curtis Bam is the wide receiver out to the right along with Stuckey, the all-purpose weapon. The speed demon Curry off to Whitehurst left. And Reese, some of the linebackers, they get antsy, man. They stand out there and they say, come on. Quarter's going to end the on ball it. Yep. Players. They bring it down. So we've had one touchdown, and it was a beauty. Take a look as freshman Calvin Johnson of Tyrone, Georgia, Puts Tech ahead by a touchdown. Nice throw by Reggie Ball. So Clemson comes up near midfield. On a first down. Whitehurst off a play fake, basically. On the move. If he can't find somebody, he'll throw it away, which he does in that second down. So now, when you watch this Clemson offense, and you see them hesitate as they come. You're tempted to call Bach. And my question for Gary is, do you like it, or does it put you to sleep? No, I don't. I don't if, whether they're in the huddle or at the line of scrimmage, there's not much action when the team is in the huddle nor on the line of scrimmage. I don't care. I think what Clemson has to do with this offense to be effective, though, is establish a running game like Georgia Tech has with Daniels. To put all the pressure on your quarterback to keep throwing through 11 games in the ACC, it's not going to work whether they huddle or line up at the line of scrimmage. It doesn't make any difference. So now I have to take it to play from the sideline. He'll go back again after telling the line. And Yusef pounds behind the yeah, see right left there. side. Yeah, that, not much doing. That puts a lot of pressure on your quarterback if you're not able to run the ball at all. Every time they run it, they get one, two yards. And that's exactly what John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, told us. We must make them one-dimensional. If they're able to run the ball out of the shotgun and let this guy pick you and dink you to death, we won't stop them. Georgia Tech has accomplished making them a one-handed fighter right now. Luda now sets up a three-man defensive look. Obviously going to rush that fourth man standing up from the left side. And Whitehurst fires for the first down across the 40-yard line. Grant, the receiver. Charlie Whitehurst has so many skills, but let's look at three of them. First of all, the guy knows the game now. He's got a great feel for the passing offense. He's got great vision as a quarterback. That's one of his main attributes. But you know what? He's got that nice, soft butterfly touch. He's big, he's huge, but he can throw the touch pass, and that's a great skill for a big guy. First down inside the 40. Clemson trailing Georgia Tech. 7-0 here. And Yusef Kelly pounds for another first down as he barges across the 25-yard line. 
See, here's where a formation play can help the running game. Chancey Stuckey comes into motion right here, the ex-quarterback. Georgia Tech says, uh-oh, we got Stuckey in the backfield, Stuckey in the backfield, looks like option. Look at these guys moving over here. And all of a sudden, the ball's going the opposite way. That's how you run the bra offense. You use your skill, guys. There's Stuckey now. Where will he get the ball? Four wide. And again, Yusef Kelly. And he's pounded by Parker. Parker sat out last week because of a one-game suspension. As you look down on our scene, Clemson, South Carolina. 81,000-plus on hand. Georgia Tech and the Tigers with... The Yellow Jackets leading at 7-0. Gary Danielson and Jack Rudolph and Brent Musburger, nice to have you along with us here tonight. Second down. First, under pressure that time. Oh, they're going to get a call there, aren't they? So far, no flags. The receiver, <laughs> Ben Hall, Asking the linesman to throw the flag, but nothing doing. Did you see James Butler, the guy who hit the receiver on the crossing route, kind of sneak away from the play like, I didn't do anything wrong on the play. Crossing route, it's a little shallower in the screen right there, just off the screen, but just as the ball is thrown, he hits the receiver, but to the official's vision, it was not a catchable ball. Third down. Whitehurst goes in zone. Touchdown! Curtis Bayham, the junior from New Orleans. And the Tigers are an extra point away from tying it up. Well, Curtis makes up for the one he dropped because this is exactly the same play, the exact same throw, and he beats Kenny Scott, the substituted corner, the third corner on the field for an easy pitch and catch. And we are deadlocked at seven. As Stephen Bird tacks on the extra point after Bam goes in zone for six. Well, 49 remaining here in the first half. Seven all. Battle of a couple of ACC teams as Clemson goes 80 yards. Remember, it was after that controversial third down play, which was overruled, brought back, and then Georgia Tech had to punt it away. Jad Dean with the ball on the tee. Will punt it. Thomas Pat Clark are back deep. Coming out on the 20. Gary, let's take a look again at this touchdown. All right, let's go a little football 101 here, okay? This is an inside technique by the corner. He has no help to the inside. If he's going to get beat by the coach, he could beat, get beat to the outside, but never the inside. Now watch Bam immediately come inside and stem and face up the receiver. Scott is dead. Once the receiver faces up, he can get inside. Bad technique by Scott. When he gets to the sideline, the coach will say, the only place I didn't want you to get beat was the inside, and you let him get inside. Bam and Tommy Bowden down there. Curry with Whitehurst. Going over the passing game. Now first down for Reggie Ball. They struck first on a beautiful catch by the freshman. Here comes Daniels. Bang and spread ahead for a couple more yards. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. Georgia Tech is one of only five Division I-A schools without the word university in its official school name. Now, who are the other four schools besides Georgia Tech? University not in the official title. I only got one of these, didn't I? Yeah, I don't. I only, I only got one. I didn't know, certainly. Didn't come up it's with a good it. one. That's a good trivia question. Clemson player down here receiving some attention. Clemson needs to stop that running game. That's the type of first down stop on the running game that they need. And uh, 
if they're going to have any chance. Well, a program reminder that uh, Monday, of course, Monday Night Football, but the uh, lead-in is the benefactor. They're going to hand out over $1 million. Looking for the player who has what it takes to step up and take it. So that's coming Monday. And uh, we'll take a break and then uh, come right back to Clemson. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. And Aflac, ask about it at work. They start young down here, these Clemson fans. That was Corey Groover, the defensive tackle who was shaken up out of Johnsonville, South Carolina, coming over to the uh, near sideline in the uh, Tiger bench. Meanwhile, for Georgia Tech, this will be a second and eight. Reggie Ball will bring him up. And the freshman wideout, Calvin Johnson, goes out to his right. Three wide receivers. Daniels is the lone running back. Deep drop for Reggie. In trouble. Down at the six of the arms of Bobby Williamson, the junior defensive end. Well, when you sack. up a third and 25 as a result of that 16 yard loss on the sack. This is the time when you got to be real careful. I think it's a smart timeout. So uh, we have a moment here and uh, we brought up the Aflac question. We ask you Georgia Tech is only one of five Division I-A schools without the word university in its official school name. Who are the other four now? And here they are. Boston College, and then the three service academies. Air Force, Army, and Navy. And as uh, we have a moment and we think about our, our great service academies, and, uh, the young men and all of the services who are protecting us abroad tonight. Uh, our thoughts go out especially to them on this, the third anniversary of 9-11 in this country and uh, all of the various memorial services. Something that, of course, no one will ever forget, nor should we. But uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the, uh, the servicemen who are now serving us overseas. We wish them Godspeed. Back here we have a third and 25 following the Georgia Tech timeout. They've got to be careful here. Clemson wants to just hold the line, get some field position. Base eye formation. The crowd making it tough for Reggie. They give Daniels a fullback. And they're going to throw for the end zone. And he just escapes the safety. He just did step out of the arms of Adams. Gaines Adams, the sophomore from Greenwood, South Carolina. And now a very dangerous punting situation here for Tech. Ben Art, number 86, will be standing almost back by the end line. punt and this is going to be great field position for Clemson they will be some 34 yards away from the end zone and a lot of it can be attributed to that sack and loss of 16 yards timeout Reggie Ball and Charlie Whitehurst here tonight and uh, Whitehurst having struck with his touchdown pass. Game is knotted up now at seven, but what a golden opportunity for Charlie Whitehurst and Clemson here. After they back Georgia Tech up, forced a short punt, and now they're 34 yards away from taking the lead. Merriweather to the middle, crosses the 30-yard line on a good first down run, and uh, check that Kyle Browning 
the ball carrier, number 28. And uh, we check in uh, down below on the injuries with Jack. Well, Rick Corey Gruber had to come out, and they are retaping his ankle. It's his left ankle. They're going to retape it, see if they can contain the swelling. He's not been cleared to go back and play. Usually, this is the first step, and they'll have to see what the swelling does. Browning stays in the game alongside Whitehurst on this second down here. And right back to him. And he is stood up at the 26-yard line by Chris and Reese. Brown, and linebacker by Chris Roswell, Reese. Georgia. Got a feel that uh, Michael Kane, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, has a feel for how to get some running effective plays. That time, uh, the counter play, they just followed big number 72, Roman Fry. That's two successful plays. They ran the ball well in the last series. And you know you, you got it in your pocket all the time. Whitehurst is accurate, and he doesn't take a lot of chances with the football. Here you got Stuckey behind the center. So Stuckey will take it and try to run for the first down, and there's a penalty flag thrown by the referee who was following on the play. Georgia Tech read the alert. Coaches told us earlier this week that as soon as Stuckey lined up as the quarterback in that shotgun, there was a yell and alert for everybody, and of course they expected him to come out and run. He did that against Wake Forest several times, and Chan is signaling to take him on back. Now that's an interesting call by Chan right here. Now he's trying to take him out of field goal range. That's the game. Holding on the offense. Number 79. That's a 10-yard penalty. He still has third down. Now remember, that would have been fourth down, a field goal try. But now you're going to give a chance for Charlie Whiters to throw the ball against you, and he's been very effective in a lot of situations. Let's see what happens if Chan gets away with it. Now, are you going to ask me if I like that uh, number two behind the center on third and three? I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, not when you've got a real good quarterback yeah. for Whitehurst. And you can run, Let throw, him dump or whatever. the ball off if you want yeah. Stucky to handle it. There's Whitehurst now. Has plenty of time. Near side and almost intercepted. The defender read it perfectly. That's the free safety, James Butler, one of the best of the defensive backs on the Tech team. Yeah, and that ball hung a little bit too long. The third and long that time, Whitehurst throws this ball late. The ball should be thrown right about now with anticipation. Should be caught at about 18 to 22 yards. Ball was down about 25 to 30 yards. That's too deep. The safety's will eat it up. Ruben Houston is back to field this punt here on fourth down. What kind of fake does Tommy have yet in this formation? Anything? This is such a wide split. Three protectors. Toward the end zone, and Clemson going to down it inside the five-yard line. A beauty that time. Cole Chasen, the punter, hanging it high. And let us check in with John Saunders, who's on high in New York. Justin Zwick put him in trouble in the second half with a couple of interceptions in that game. That was a dandy there. Here it's first and ten, and again, Reggie Ball with horrible field position. Must be careful with this crowd howling. Daniels the running back. This time, no pass out of the end zone. Daniels across the five, and these great views tonight are being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship, the Bloomin' Onion One. Captain Mitch Johnson at the controls. I above this beautiful scene tonight on Clemson Memorial Stadium. Well, last time the Clemson defense forced that bad field position, stopped the running play on first down, sack on second down, and almost a safety on third down. This time, at least it's first to ten backed up, and you can run P.J. Daniels. Thomas and Johnson. Out wide. Deep eyes set for P.J. who's going to run out it to the right side. And this will be third and a few here coming up. Hard to believe a guy with this type of skill wasn't even recruited by any major or small college in the country. Because he's got wiggle, he falls forward, and he is a threat every play to, to give you that bunch yards. You know, he can go 35, 40 yards, or he can get you the tough yards, and now... 
third and medium here, you got the position of Reggie Ball could be your carrier, or P.J. Daniels could be your ball carrier. Coaching staff at Georgia Tech is furious. Substitution pattern. A player didn't get the assignment. Didn't get on the field. They don't have the personnel they want. Reggie keeps it, gets outside containment, and throws for the first down. Puts it in the hands of LeVon Thomas. Boy, is that nice. See, that's, that's what Reggie Ball can do you as, a, as an offensive coordinator. Throw the ball accurately on the run. That was going to his left. Had to be very accurate. Threw it right into the stomach of Thomas. An easy pitch and catch. Now Bilbo comes onto the field. Very important first down coming out right there. Xavier McGuire, number 81, is also in as a wide receiver for Georgia Tech in this formation. Three wide out to the right. And Reggie going to take it off. Crosses the 30-yard line, and let's check in with Jack. Well, Brent, in the offseason, Reggie Ball was asked to go and face himself in the mirror. He had to take a towel like this, and the coaches wanted him to throw with his elbow, and I'm not a quarterback, as you can attest to, Gary, with his elbow above his shoulder. He said, I felt foolish looking at myself. He said, but it trained my muscle memory so that and when I did it, not a problem. Well, that was good. I'm just an old yeah, center there, that was, boy. It's nice. You could be a towel boy now, Jack. Gary, he went on the Atkins diet just to yep, do that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and short. Daniels straight ahead, first down, Georgia Tech. When I talk to kids in clinics, or when I taught my kids how to throw, you know how I did that to keep their elbow high? I put them in the pool, in the water, so when they played catch, they had to get their elbow out of the water or they couldn't throw. It's another way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lacrosse game gonna break out here any second. <laughs> this is <a> great shot. <laughs> they do everything. First down at 10. So Reggie Ball presenting a lot of different problems here for Clemson tonight. Look at him try to get outside containment. Steps out of bounds. Nice gain on first down. And nobody knows better the problems he presents than Clemson coach Tommy Bowden. With uh, Reggie Ball, you have to make your defense uh, aware of him. Protection does break down. Uh, usually that's a plus. With him, that could be a negative because uh, they create a quarterback draw. He had one just like that. Woody Danzler. Remember when he had him here like that? And he used him just the same way that Georgia Tech uses Reggie Ball. That, that's really good coaching to me. You can move the ball with a Charlie Whitehurst, or you can move the ball with a Woody Danzler. Second and five. Oh. Reggie facing pressure hits Johnson and it's a first down at the 46 yard line now that was a fine pass by Reggie because he could see the pressure coming there was no question he was going to take a shot that time he showed the courage that a quarterback has to have in the face of the heat that time from Gaines Adams and he didn't fall away from the throw you know you know we we had a tough game last night that we did both the quarterbacks, I felt that game, were kind of falling away from their throws under pressure. That time, Reggie stepped right into that throw and showed the courage that he's going to get hit, and he just stood there and threw it. Hard to show toughness as a quarterback. On first down, Daniels goes nowhere against the Clemson front that time, led by Eric Coleman, the senior from Charlottesville, Virginia. Speaking of Virginia. What a yeah. nice win they had over North Carolina today. Al Grove doing a great job up there with the uh, Virginia football team. You can really see the influence of the professional game in college, though. The pros like to create a pressure point that kind of tilts the defense that way. Calvin Johnson has created that pressure point in the Clemson defense. They're scared to death of him. They've established him short. They've established him on the flag route, and they've established him deep. Every time he breaks the huddle, number 21 has to be noticed by the Clemson defense. He's off to the right right now. He's the middle of the three pack and Reggie looking in that direction, but he puts it into the arms of Thomas and that is another first down and Reggie took another shot. 
So feeling the pressure back there is Clemson bringing the heat now. And it looks like there's a flag on that far side. You'll see it right here. Protection was not great. Fanned out. Oh, the offensive tackle just did an ole block. Tried to wind him. Threw him down. And it felt like his right ankle looked like he grabbed right there, didn't it? It wasn't vicious, but it looked like a right ankle. Face my ass. Perfect throw, though. So the face mask penalty tacks on a few yards and Georgia Tech across the 40 yard line. Keep an eye now on Reggie Ball. He's such a threat to run the ball. But if that ankle gets a bit gimpy and you see him looking down right there he's got the plays kind of sealed on his belt right there to call him. Chris Woods, the junior from College Park, Georgia, his first carry of the game. Daniels, 14 carries for 48 yards here in the first half. Coming up on the Valvoline halftime show, John Craig and somebody who's going to be real happy, former Notre Dame All-American Aaron Tell. He'll tell you all about how his fight night upset the Michigan Wolverines today in South Bend. I bet he hasn't come down from the season yet. Second down now. Alumni going to write another letter this week or something like that to get it done. <laughs> Three pack to the left for Reggie. Deep drop in trouble. Pulls away with that great skill. Goes in zone high. Deflected. And then a second. No. Got it at the nine yard line. Yep. Tremaine Billy. My, what a defensive play here by Clemson. But it's as good as a punt when you consider field position. Consider what this drive started on the one yard line. Reggie throws it as far as he can, becomes a jump ball. It's batted up in the air, and Billy gets a little tip ball. No tip ball. He's off here in Tana. Johnson had a good shot at it. Defenders were right there, too. He just had a So, told you that uh, that's just basic for a corner. Do not give up the inside when you've got that man. 
Now that punt formation, you can see the wide splits here, Gary. Yeah, and watch them slide together after the ball passes. Jason booms it. Well, Houston's drill. <laughs> Houston had nowhere to go. You know, what's the fair catch signal? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You could use it once in a while, could you? Uh, he may want to practice. He may want to practice the fair catch after this right here. Right As there. Watkins drilled him. That's what happens. He had nowhere to go to his right there because of the sideline. And Watkins says, I know exactly where you're going, and I can zero in on you. Good field position, though. Remember last time, I think they started, what, on their one or two yard line? Right. Now they turned it around one time, and they started on the 48-yard line. Yeah, that's why the uh, the interception really didn't matter as far as field position. Right. Like we said, it was as good as a punt, and uh, that is proving to be the case as Chris Woods is in as the running back right now, throws a block, and uh, they wanted Johnson, and Johnson was really covered very, very well that time. That was Justin Miller, the uh, junior from Kentucky. You know, it's uh, time now to go deep again. Justin Miller is squatting on those plays. When you watch tape of Justin Miller and Ty Hill, the two corners, they are very good at reading the drop of the quarterback. If that offensive line sets up short and the quarterback sets up short, those corners squat. So what happens is if you're the offensive coordinator, Patrick Nix or Chan Gailey, you got to shorten that drop by the quarterback and go deep against them. That ball's going to take off again. He'll be out of bounds at the 45-yard line. This will bring up about a third and six or seven here. And uh, you can see the referee telling the corner, to get on back there that time to Ty Hill as you look at the other one, Justin Miller. Yeah, let's take a look at him. He's only been thrown at two times. Reputation is important. Not a lot of punt. Three tackles, though, but that is the type of shutdown corner you like. He plays to the wide side of the field, and when you don't throw to the wide side of the field a lot, Justin Miller is doing his job. Third down and seven. There's the matchup. Those two guys, 21. Daniels is back in the game as the running back. Clemson going to come on a blitz. Reggie goes one on one sideline pass knocked down and uh, that was outstanding coverage by Ty Hill. No chance for Levon Thomas that time. I mean Hill was right there and he's saying no way not going to happen against me. Came as a running back speed back he is he could run 10 to 9 10 to 7. In fact, he What's said it? if he wouldn't have given up track, he might go 10 flat, huh? What's that? What's that Human relations development or home, home, home run development? <laughs> <laughs> what is that, the University of Belco or something like that? <laughs> Here we go. I uh, punt by Benny Arndt. It'll go on into the end zone and come out on the 20-yard line. Let's get out below to Jack. Well, Brent, there's going to be a brand new end zone starting after the South Carolina game. They're going to break ground to this new end zone initiative. $56 million is going to be new club seats. It's three stages, also new locker rooms. And by the way, if you want to sponsor the locker rooms, Brent, they're $1.2 million. I know Gary, he could maybe sponsor one of the lockers. They're only $10,000 for naming rights. It's going to be a state-of-the-art <laughs> facility to bring this Death Valley up to 21st century standards. Hey, Jack, how much are those soap dishes? I might go for one of those soap dishes. Maybe about four grand. <laughs> Did you note that... Uh, the hill's staying. The hill staying the on the other, other side. End zone. <laughs> the, the great tradition of coming down the hill remains. First down and 10. Now, you know Charlie Whitehurst right here. He, he did the two-minute drill to win the game, tie the game, put it in overtime. He'd like to at least get a field goal out of this drive. Comes in underneath to Grant. Bottles oh, got it back. <laughs> Saved it. Woo As uh, Kenny Scott was the uh, corner working on, Kelvin. Little half roll. Get the ball to it. Call us a smash route. The receiver goes out five yards and just stops there in the flat pass. Get it, bop it, and grab it. Stucky's been very quiet in this game, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And I was just thinking Curry, who goes in motion next to Whitehurst. And they want him on the inside shovel pass. And uh, Georgia Tech was ready for that play. And they, uh, they stopped Curry just short of the first down. Uh, that was Wilkinson, the middle linebacker. He read that play very, very well. And now uh, coming back in is the big tight end, Ben Hall, as uh, Clemson continues to substitute about three fellows for about each play. Fullback Cliff Harrell, 
onto the field for them now. Third down and short. They could be running the ISO this time. Nope, Whitehurst going to throw. Set it up and throw and a incomplete. Uh, you got to so make that. Forced a punt. Got to make that play. Yeah, absolutely, you absolutely. He had a one on one there. He, he turned his shoulders exactly like you're supposed to do. Remember, Reggie Ball made the play over here on this side of the field in that situation. Turned his shoulders, threw it, and just threw it in the ground. One of his uh, two or three, he threw one fade a little deep, and that went a little, little low right there. Yeah, Ruben Houston's back. I wonder if there are any cobwebs. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. <laughs> he gets ready. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, these young punters look pretty good here tonight, don't Here they? it is. Look at the splits, as Brent talked about. And when the ball goes through right there, then these guys will close and take on any of the rushers inside. See how they close it up? That's a new formation, about two or three years old in this league. Here's Houston. Pretty good looking return out to the near the 40 yard line, and uh, that's where Reggie Ball will put it at about 118 to go here in the first half of a tie ball game. And uh, normally, when these two teams play, it is very close through the years. And you can forget last year what <laughs> happened down in the. Uh, <laughs> And notice how I always throw the exception. <laughs> I don't want to prove myself wrong before I get too far right. into this. But this stock is rivals. hot, except for the last one I gave you. <laughs> First down and ten. <laughs> Indeed, the stock of the week. Reggie back now at the gun. That's an illegal formation for uh, Georgia Tech on this play. Did they call it? Well, they had to call it. They didn't have the, the tackle covered. I didn't see the flag yet. Oh, yep, they did. Okay. Good job. Tackle by the Tigers, number 24, So they'll march it on back here. We haven't had too many. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay the down. Yeah, you can see it. The left tackle on this play right here was not covered by a wide receiver. Both of these guys here go back as flankers, and there's one, two, three, four, five guys in the backfield. That's a penalty. Either way you want to look at it. Haven't had a costly turnover in the game. We won uh, Georgia Tech through that one interception, but uh, no harm, no foul. They got it back after a punt. Georgia Tech with one timeout left. Clemson with all three. Inside of a minute, first and long, and uh, Reggie under an all-out assault that time. He simply went down. Ty Hill was blitzing off the uh, corner. Leroy Hill, the fine linebacker, number 43. There's two good football players coming at you there. See now, Clemson should take the timeout because now the down and distance has changed. So we've got a, uh, you know, we've got a timeout, and Gary, you and I were uh, down in, uh, in Miami, and I know a lot of those fans are watching tonight. Now it's an ACC conference game, and of course, as you look back, and uh, Brock Berlin on this uh, splendid drive, and Hill caught that screen pass and uh, attacked that corner that had been weakened by injuries, and then, and then of course, they went into overtime, and here came Frank Gore. And uh, let me check myself. I was at Hill on my mind. Moss, of course, yes. tied it off that screen pass. And uh, that was Frank Gore. What did you think about uh, Miami pulling that out? Uh, I thought in the second half that uh, you'd like thinking back at it as you look back at the game, it seemed to me that Brock Berlin kind of got his sea legs in that football game. Of the two quarterbacks, he was the one who made the more better plays in the second half. And, you know, poor Chris Ricks, I mean, he just couldn't help himself. He, he has great determination and he flies his body all over. We showed the block, we showed the diving play. But when he had to make the smart play, he just couldn't make it for his team. And you know, when you think about it again, Brent, I mean, I know he didn't miss the field goal, but the field goal ices the game if they make that one and don't get it blocked. And uh, yeah, it was blocked. Yep. All the others in, the, in that rivalry, as uh, Coach Bowden told us uh, earlier in the morning, he yep. said, when you look back, you know, they've been wide right, wide left. We never had one blocked. And then last night he has one yeah. block Clemson now real quickly because it's second and long they've got two timeouts left they had three so now they're going to try to play down in distance in time and see if they can get the ball back here second down and 24 Reggie will work on the clock with the quarterback draw and he's down at the uh, 25 yard line and that Watkins making this stop 
You know, with uh, Tommy Bowden, with the new rule this year, Brent, was the guy who called the timeout. He ran onto the field, way down on the bottom of the right-hand side, and, and made the call right on this scramble. Scramble goes up, and nobody out there calls timeout. You can see all the 22 guys. Nobody's calling timeout, because on the sideline, Bowden is calling timeout, and that saved a couple, two or three seconds. Now Tommy telling everybody what he wants to attempt here to get it to get it back. He still faces one more play. Third down. Going over the strategy. Remember, if they throw a pass and it's incomplete, obviously we don't burn a timeout. I'm going to control it. He's telling his team on the field, don't you guys call timeout. I'm in control on the sidelines. No Chris Webbers. I'll do it. No Eric Winston. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> but Eric got away with it last night. <laughs> we check it with Jack. Well, Brent, if you remember, in 2003, the Clemson Tigers got off to a very slow start and then closed fast at the end. After that slow start last season, he got his team together and said, here are our goals for 2004. Let's put the emphasis on getting off to a fast start. Let's not try to string together consecutive victories at the end of the season. Let's just get out of the blocks well. Their first step, of course, was the win against Wake Forest a week ago. This would be a long way into getting out of the blocks in the first few steps, should they win today, step two. All right, now, Let's see what Tech can do against the clock. They love the quarterback draw here in this situation. Reggie will attempt, slides it down, stays in bounds, but a quick timeout there you can see. Coach calling the timeout right there with 28 seconds. I like that rule change, down. don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, if the coach is getting paid all this money, he's the guy that's riding the hot seat. He should at least be able to call timeout. And he's got that serious uh, speed on that team. You would think that they might try to get a bomb to Curry, depending on what happens, or maybe even go after this punt. A, a five-yard sure. penalty uh, will not give... Georgia Tech a first down a young inexperienced punter and Georgia Tech will know that and it, anything you get I mean, you just catch it and punt it here this is a one step punt if you get this off you're happy but Chan Gailey had to force Clemson into using their last timeout with only 28 seconds to go in the half Miller would be the uh, return man going back Remember, Stuckey, number two, is the guy who had the blocked punt in the game previous and almost got another one. He's lined up the right side, second man in. There he's number two. Chancey Stuckey, 4-3 speed. It must account for him. Ben Hart. Gets it off. Here's Miller up at the 35. And down at the 38-yard line. And uh, on the clock, I've got 19 seconds over here. With Economist coming down to uh, make the tackle. Clemson now out of timeouts. They've got 19 seconds. Of course, you can stop it with the uh, incompletion, sideline pass, or first down. Yeah, see, I think, I think they all, they got to look for a chunk play right away here. I think they got to look to throw a a flag route 25 30 yards downfield and get a first down because they don't have time to throw three plays. Tech brings a blitz on first down and out of bounds stops the clock across midfield grant the receiver that time and Georgia Tech unlike Florida State last night they brought pressure here I, in this I, situation. I was surprised in that situation with 28 seconds to go that you just don't play a deep umbrella and force the ball to the middle of the field. That was too simple. Coming again, a blitz. Same play. Still can't get there. And Grant stops the clock with nine seconds to go at the 36-yard line. This is like watching uh, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison go out and warm up before the game, throw a sideline route. There's no coverage. Scott is way off. Remember, he got beat number two for the touchdown. He ain't going to get beat inside again. Now it's coverage. First down, but this drive appears to give going to go for the down with Grant. Scott's back there all over at that time. It's a nice call. Three seconds, and uh, 
I suppose they could attempt a, a long, long field goal here in this situation or try to throw it down in the end zone toward Curry, Stuckey, Grant, Bayham, one of these fellows. Remember, it was Grant who caught the lob pass against Wake Forest for the two point play. So that's what they basically did there. They're going to go the Big Ben again here. Georgia Tech only has two safeties back there. Whitehurst checks it up in the air. Four receivers, and it is intercepted. Intercepted inside the five-yard line by Reuben Houston, the corner from Peachtree City, Georgia. He was an active young man, returned punts, took a shot, had a good return, and now he makes an interception to the Hail Mary. Let's go down to Jack and Root with Chan Gailey. Well, Coach, how do you break this knotted-up tie that you've got going on? Keep moving the ball, stick it in the end zone. All right, coach, good luck. So we'll take a break and you'll hear from the fellas in New York. John and the gang will have all the scores and highlights coming up. A glimpse of the highlights of the first half. We've had some big plays in this seven all tie, and uh, Gary Danderson. One player is missing in action, though, for Clemson. <laughs> yeah, kind of easy to pick out the out of whack stat tonight, isn't it? I mean, this offense is designed to spread the ball around to your weapons. Tonight, Chancey Stuckey cannot get the football, and that's why Clemson only has seven points on the board. They dropped a touchdown pass, I'll give you that, but they can't get it to their playmaker, Stuckey. Georgia Tech winning the toss and deferring. So they will receive to uh, start the second half. Not a doubt on that every time, is there? No, just bring it out in the 20 yard line. Well, you know, Gary mentioned the out of wax stat about Chancey Stuckey. What he did last week compared with tonight. It really is, and, and they've gone to them. They just haven't been able to hook up, and that's a real playmaker. And again, the spread offense is designed to spread that defense out and let you attack with the guys you want to attack with. The defense can't necessarily take a guy away from you, but so far, Stuckey can't get the ball. Stuck on zero. Andy Tidwell Neal, number 65, the senior from Plymouth, Minnesota. Over the football. Reggie Ball on a short hits, and he's got it into the hands of Levon Thomas. And a mistake by the DB that time. And Thomas was able to pick up considerable more yardage when he should have been out of bounds initially. That's a 20-yard gain here, Gary. This is a gutsy call. Look at it. It's press coverage, and you call this a lock comeback. Everyone thinks you're going to run a fade. You turn into the receiver, and by the time the corner, Justin Miller turns back and looks for the ball, the ball's by him. A brilliant throw by Reggie. Which moves the ball out to the 40-yard line here. Daniels, the big running back, who rushed for 48 yards in the first half. Deep set in the eye. Going to get the long handoff, and he had big daylight in the middle. Whoa. He just bangs it to the 40-yard line. And I think he lost the ball as he went down. He was crumpled after that 19-yard gain and uh, having difficulty getting back up now. I mean, you, you talk about running a sprint right at the safety right here. A little outside action because Reggie comes out here and forces Clemson to play him wide. And the ball goes right up the gut, overrun by Leroy Hill. And then watch this sprint right into the safety right there. They hit each other. I th looks like Daniels caught that helmet right on his thigh or knee. Pugh got underneath Daniels, and I wonder if he's limping a bit because that helmet caught him right on the right thigh or knee. It didn't go helmet to helmet. He got lower than him that time. I don't know if he's woozy or he a little of everything, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Man, he's a hard runner. Oh, Chris yeah. Woods now, the junior from College Park. He'll be the eye back here. Daniels gives Georgia Tech a first down at the Clemson 41-yard line. And Woods bangs into the same hole and crosses the 35-yard line as we check in with Jack on what went on at halftime with the Tigers. Well, this was not the way Tommy Bowden wanted to see what he called the most important 30 minutes of the season starting out. He said, we're one play away from winning this game. He also said, gentlemen, we don't want this to go to the fourth quarter. He challenged his team to run, swarm, and attack. 
We'll just have to wait and see if they do so. So Tech able to run the ball the last couple of times after Reggie opens with that pass. Tied in flexes here for Gailey's rambling wreck. And on second down, here's Woods, and he's tackled in the backfield that time by the big linebacker, Leroy Hill. Well, it's our Pacific Life game summary stats. We showed you what's out of whack, but everything else, Gary, pretty equal. Yeah, you call that a 7-7 game right there. 40 plays each. Almost everything in the game is pretty even. And uh, the, what could tip it? It could be the running game or lack of running game for Georgia Tech. That's why P.J. Daniels is so important in this football game. Bilbo the wide out. Johnson who scored the Tech touchdown. Out to the right, Bilbo's in the slot. Now Reggie, right, Johnson, deep, incomplete. Johnson was working against Ty Hill, and Eric Sampson, the linebacker, dropping back. Yeah, Sampson is a, a bit of a rover and a bit of a linebacker. Uh, if motion takes him, he'll go from the linebacker position to a safety position, and then one of the safeties will come up and replace him in this spread offense for when uh, Georgia Tech lines up that way. Over on the other sideline, Daniels receiving some medical attention here. You wonder if he got his bell rung on that play because they're just standing there kind of waiting for him to clear. Fourth and short. Uh, Clemson will be watching Reggie Ball. He's fully capable at running the quarterback draw. They'll give him the tight eye formation here, needing a couple of yards for the first down. Somebody must watch the Tech quarterback. He's going to roll hard to the right. Can't get the corner. Going to throw for it. Got it. Nice catch by Levon Thomas for the first down. So it was a run pass as ball rolls hard to the right. Bobby Williamson, number 81, the defensive end, gets sucked inside on this play. Ball gets around him. 81, Williamson can't get him, and then throwing on the run. Ball takes his time, makes sure of it. A wonderful catch, wonderful catch that time by LeVon Thomas. Because it was completely against all of his momentum going one direction. He spins around and catches it. Ball is inside the 25-yard line for Tech, and a timeout has to be called. I think a little bit of confusion there with the play, and uh, Reggie will go over to the sideline with that time running down. Jack Aru tells us from downstairs that you can expect to see P.J. Daniels before long, but he's been cleared by the medical staff, and uh, Reggie Ball now, what he's accomplishing in this game. Good-looking drive here so far, and Daniels has already checked back in. And he'll get the call right after the timeout, and he barges toward that 20-yard line on... First down, Fudge makes the stop. So they are definitely finding their uh, running game here with the ball at the controls. And it accomplishes it a lot. It keeps the ball out of Charlie Whitehurst's hands and moves the chains. And remember, with Reggie Ball having the ability to run the ball also, gives them a two-back offense even when they're in one back like this. Reggie Ball, such a promising quarterback at Tech. That inside shuffle pass now to Woods is short. And, uh, you know, let's uh, let's take a closer look at sophomore quarterback Reggie Ball. Let him talk about himself here. My name is Reggie Ball, and I'm the starting quarterback at Georgia Tech. My favorite historical figure is Muhammad Ali. When I was a kid playing football, I used to pretend to be Barry Sanders. When I'm not playing football, I like to watch TV. And he watches a lot of football games <laughs> when he's watching television, too. He uh, he enjoyed that LSU-Oregon State game the other night. We discussed that. Who knows what's going on around the country. Here. Third down now for Reggie and Tech inside the Clemson 20-yard line. Tied at seven. Looking for the quarterback draw on the first down. Reggie's got it inside the 10-yard line. And he is down at about the seven-yard line. I'll tell you, P.J. Daniels that time, a great block to take the legs from the linebacker and allow Reggie Ball to pick up that first down. Daniels right here, gets the ball so many times as a runner, but this time watch him come out, get the linebacker out of the hole, quarterback draw all the way, lead draw for the quarterback, gets the big block on Waters right there, and you can see Reggie sticks it up in there hard, 
and gets the first down. Really well-conceived offensive drive right here. We'll see if Tech can finish it off. They've got the, the Clemson defensive fellows back on their heels, don't they, here this time. First down and goal. High now to Johnson to the one-yard line, where it will be second down and goal. Let's check in with Jack. Well, Rent, the referees and the officials were just getting up in Reggie Ball's face, reminding him that he better not jawbone. He has a tendency to get a little emotional, Patrick Nix told us. He did on the previous, get, previous down. When he was uh, tackled, he came up, and his mouth was flapping, and immediately the referee told him, not anymore. And Clemson's got to be worried about his feet right here, Jack. Yes. Let me tell you something. He can put such pressure if he rolls out to the right on that corner. He has demonstrated he can throw on the run, and he's a dangerous runner. The wide side is off to his right. The tight end flexes in that direction and then comes through. They prefer Daniels who goes nowhere. Clemson ready for that, and now suddenly it is third down. Well, that play just didn't have any momentum. They brought the wing back in motion and ran a straight dive play behind it, and it just didn't have anything. Ran right into it, take, makes the play on the play, and uh, that was a play that looked good on the blackboard when you try to run it against live people, just didn't have anything. Now I think uh, Brent's call it, should have probably been made on second, it's gonna be made on third. You gotta give the pass run option or as Chan Gailey told us, the big guy, number 21, is like Plexico Burris out there. You might see the fade. And against Hill, up firing for him, and not to be that time. Johnson had a crack at it. They had what they wanted. And Ty Hill was the defensive back right there on Johnson. With that body ran that slant in on the inside and it's a uh, fourth down now and here comes a tough call they're not going to go for the field goal they're looking touchdown now you got to do the reggie ball you got to get him out of the corner you got to get the pass run option for your quarterback johnson is split to the right daniels eye back to the left the toss play, Daniels cuts inside, stop. A beautiful goal line stand by the Clemson Tigers. Hill and Waters stuff the running back that time. And you can second guess Chan Gailey for not at least putting ball one time on the outside, the wide side of the field. I tell you, all the quarterbacks we talked to, a coach, excuse me, all the coaches we talked to say, I wish I had a running quarterback down by the goal line so I could use them when those defenses get up there. Now, Georgia Tech might have a, the best running quarterback, and not one time do they give your quarterback an option pass run to the sideline. That series will eat away at Tech for weeks if they don't somehow find a way to win this football game. That was a brilliant drive, and then credit the Clemson defense as Whitehurst barges ahead for about a yard or so. I know his dad is here watching very close. And of course, uh, David was a NFL quarterback. Time permitting, the thrifty Carmen post game report. John Craig and Aaron, stay tuned. Highlights and analysis from today's matchups, and uh, didn't we have a few? I think the way Georgia Tech moved that ball right down the field, Clemson needs a first down badly. Will Whitehurst try to go to one on one to the outside out here and try to get out there by throwing the ball? Kelly. Made the most of it to the four-yard line. It'll be third down, and that's Michael Hall, the sophomore linebacker from Houston, Texas. When you take a look at the hometowns of the Georgia Tech fellows, they do a pretty good job of recruiting nationally. You got fellows from uh, out in California, Texas, of course, an abundance of them from Georgia, but uh, then they go up into the Northeast, bring down some players, so a much more national recruiting program than uh, many of the teams in the ACC, Whitehurst, Rolls to the left side. Fires far side, wants Stuckey, and that's going to draw a flag. There's no question about that one. Dennis Davis, the senior from New Jersey, was all over Chancey Stuckey. No question about that call. Got himself out of position and just could not take the chance that it was a perfectly thrown ball and it was a touchdown. So Davis just has to grab Stuckey. Look, he doesn't know where the ball is. He doesn't feel confident. And as the slowdown comes, he said, I just can't take the chance. I'm going to give him 15 yards. I can't let him catch it and let him run around the space here. 
Got to turn around and look. I mean, they go over it every day. Number 25 defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Turn your head when the receiver slows down and puts the hands up. You got to turn your head, but it must be much more difficult to do than say, right? Exactly. <laughs> Huge first down. Balls moved out to the 20. Remember, they were backed up in the shadow of the goal when they started this. And again, Whitehurst going to the left, takes a lick, throws deep, Stuckey again intercepted. Picked off at the 40-yard line by Darwin Landry, the strong safety from Louisiana. Georgia Tech gets it right back. We're still tied at seven. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football is brought to you by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, and American Revolution, the Hartford Mutual Funds, official corporate partner of the NCAA, and ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. As you look down on Death Valley tied at seven, let's go back to that last turnover here, Gary. Just a two-man pattern this time. Whitehurst throws it up for grab. He thinks he's got one-on-one -on -one with Stuckey like the last play. Doesn't account for the safety. And watch this hit right in here. Big time by Travis Parker. Whoops, just as he let the ball go. Whitehurst took a mean one. Daniels busting away. Rushed for more than 70 yards here tonight. And uh, let's check in with an update from John Saunders. John? Yeah, John, and we were there when uh, he busted three of those, eight against UCLA. Reggie unloads it to Daniels. I believe that's the first time they've used him as a receiver. Uh, he's not a bad receiver coming out of the backfield, but this will put him in about 0-3rd and 4. Billy makes the defensive play. I want to go back and uh, see why he's take this lick. It's a good one. Yeah, it really is. Parker just kind of lets him go, but, uh, you know, this is uh, you almost deserve this hit, Brent, when you make a throw down the middle like this. Don't account for the free safety. This uh, throw did not make three people happy. Whitehurst, Michael Kane as coordinator, or Tommy Bowden as head coach. That was a bad call. I mean, bad play by the quarterback. So it is a third and five, just short of the 45-yard line. And the bell under Reggie Ball, I should say, the pressure throw is incomplete. And now Tech will punt. Ty Hill was the uh, pressure point on ball. That blitz to that, that right side blitz has worked very effectively for the Clemson defense. Two or three times Reggie Ball has taken big hits on that quick blitz from the corner. Bernard is back to punt. Justin Miller. The Just special teams work so far by Georgia Tech has been good. It's been solid. This one's down inside the 20-yard line. They brought pressure that time, and the young punter able to get it off. He kicks a very high football. So we are tied at 7 here with 6.13 to go in the third quarter. More than 81,000 on hand. Sitting in on a good one. ACC battle. Welcome those of you who've been watching USC beat up on Colorado State. Here you are watching a tie game in the ACC between Clemson and Georgia Tech. With Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. That is their all-purpose weapon, Stuckey. Clemson wearing all orange here tonight. The first touchdown of the game was scored by Georgia Tech. Clemson then tied it, both touchdowns coming in the first half on pass plays. One of them by Reggie Ball of Georgia Tech. And the other one by the Clemson quarterback, Charlie Whitehurst. Right now it is Whitehurst and Clemson. And here comes a double reverse, putting it back now into uh, Stuckey's hands. And he twists away. And now goes down at the 20-yard line where it will be third down coming up. And Reuben Houston, the corner defending that. 
Well, we've had these great aerial shots here tonight. And for those of you who just joined us, the Outback Steakhouse Bloomin' Onions up there, and he can show you some great shots of 81,000 plus on hand on a gorgeous evening for football in South Carolina. Two ancient rivals, Georgia Tech and Clemson. Tech located just down the highway, down the interstate, down there over Atlanta town. And here's Whitehurst on third down. Middle incomplete. And Clemson forced a punt. That was well walled off that time by Dennis. Number 25, the corner, playing over the slot. He did not allow the receiver to get to the middle of the field. It's exactly where the opening was, and Dennis did not allow that slot receiver to get inside. Perfect job of defense. I'll tell you this, Georgia Tech defense is very well schooled. Reverse, option, stutter passes, whatever. It has been very stopped pretty effectively by the Tech defense. There's this wacky uh, punt formation again. Wide spacing up front. About Three protectors. Five yards apart up front, aren't they? Chasing the punter. Houston set to return it. Here's Houston. The young man just does not know how to signal fair catch and uh, ball was put down and scooped up by Tech, but been whistled dead that time as Watkins makes the play for the Tigers. We got a timeout. Deadlocked at seven. Well, Gary, uh, some folks have just joined us. Uh, talk about these two quarterbacks. Here. Yeah, we talked about a little bit in the open. Uh, so diversified the offenses. Uh, Reggie Ball, brilliant at what he does. More movement, more quarterback draws, more variety in the offense. Charlie, more the, the typical drop back, only he twist is he goes with a no huddle on almost every play and but he still throws most of them from the pocket there's an outstanding freshman for those of you who just joined this as one of the receivers Johnson is his name and Reggie's looking for him he's got a step but he underthrew him out of bounds and uh, Calvin Johnson made the touchdown reception on a sort of circle reception on a rainbow back in the first half, and he is some good-looking freshman. And had that ball been thrown exactly like the touchdown play, that would have been caught. He had him beat. He could have caught that pass, but it was thrown out of bounds. Not even the best ones can catch him when they're thrown out of bounds. Reggie would love to have that throw over. Daniels, the running back for Georgia Tech, 73 yards tonight, 19 carries. He'll run the draw play, crosses the 45-yard line, picks up about three yards, and Tate, the junior from Gaffney, South Carolina, with the stop. Seems like both coaches are not willing to give in. They just, they're gonna play a little bit safe, punt the ball if they have to, Chan Gailey has to love it. The crowd's really not in the game like I've been to Clemson games before. Not enough happening. It's almost, I think for Georgia Tech's purposes, the type of home field advantage that you could possibly have if you're playing on the road. Three pack now for Reggie off to his left on third and eight. Johnson the big fella. And he's swarmed and down. Ty Hill blitzing from the corner that time. One of the speed demons on this Tiger team. It's the fourth time when they've gone trips to the wide side of the field. Clemson has brought two men. They'll bring this guy, they'll bring that guy to the outside. You can see it. Miss protection. And all of a sudden, Reggie's got that blindside guy. He was looking left. And that's too much speed to the outside to stop. Now Ben Arndt. Clemson trying to set a return for Miller. He's the other corner with great speed. Bobbles it. Goes back inside the five and just has to fall on it at the six-yard line. Couldn't get the handle. Boy, that was a line drive punt, and if it was handled well by Miller, he had an opportunity to make that a big return. So again, horrible field position for Clemson. They have not been able to get out of a hole here in the second half. Georgia Tech dominating the battle of field position here in the second half. But on the scoreboard, we're deadlocked at seven. Here yeah. comes Whitehurst, his daddy, of course. One time NFL quarterback. And his father and son still very, very close. As Charlie Whitehurst, a junior. Back in that shotgun. For those of you who just joined us, they get late plays signaled in for the sideline. This is Yusef Kelly, best run of the night. 
down at the 26-yard line. And that was a powerful looking run for 20 yards. See, this is what's so deceptive about the rushing yards for Clemson. Since this was a forward shovel, it was going to go down as a passing yardage play, but it really is a run in this offense. And that's the it's a running play that has to be stopped by Georgia Tech. But when you look at the stats after, the rushing yards won't change at all for Clemson. All right, there's on the handoff to Merriweather who now is the ball carrier. That's Reggie Merriweather, the sophomore from North Augusta, South Carolina. And Hawaii makes the stop. And let's check in with John Saunders on Texas, Arkansas. What's happening down there, John? All right, John, and uh, let's we'll see what happens with that one in the second half. Here's Stuckey, middle screen. Stuckey makes a move, and he's just short of midfield. So the out of whack stat that we showed you about also impressed head coach Tommy Bowden Absolutely. because now Clemson making a considerable effort to get the ball in the hands of their former quarterback. If you could put right now Stuckey into a Miami uniform, wouldn't that look just like Boss catching that pass right there? 4-3 speed, smallish, hard to hit in the open field. That's the type of receiver you love to throw those little quick screens to. Whitehurst now gets the play from the sideline. And this ooh, is ooh. Reese Curry. Man, did he take a shot. That was James Butler, the safety unloading. And uh, we'll remind you at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship fund. I'm pretty impressed with Curry, number one. He is a sprinter. But he stood in there and caught those little hitch passes and took a hit. And you can show you can do that the way he runs. He's going to play at the next level. Georgia Tech and Clemson deadlocked at seven down here to the final seconds of the third quarter. One of the things that Georgia Tech has given this Clemson offense trouble with is they have been willing to blitz anyone on the field. Even the safeties that are lined up 15 yards deep will sneak up and blitz from there. All 11 guys are potentially blitzers. I think Ron Cherry was looking at the clock. So uh, I think Ron is trying to get it reset over here. He's explaining to Tommy Bowden. Wait, please reset. One minute, 36 seconds. So 10 seconds he'll add to 136, and uh, then we'll be playing ball. There we are. Let's check in with Jack. Well, Brent, we see that Curry is not dropping passes anymore, and you got to go all the way to the weight room to a piece of merchandise that was bought back when they won a national championship in 1981. It's called the gripper machine. Nobody uses it except for an easy Curry. <laughs> Damn, I got to give him one of those. <laughs> Second down. Whitehurst goes middle. Grant high, reaching target 6-3. Got it close to the 35-yard line. So many of those short passes to the outside, short pass to the outside, hitch to the outside. All of a sudden, you bring Grant across the middle. Easy pitch and catch on the square end. Charlie Whiters has a beautiful game. He's forced a couple passes downfield, got one of them picked off, but that is the type of quarterback that can burn you with it. Pass over the middle, risk reward, but he does it very well. Clemson's most impressive drive of the second half. Neither team able to finish much off here in this game. First down. There's the inside handoff. Merriweather to the 25 yard line. Reggie goes airborne as Ruben Houston makes the hit and that's 12 more at a first down. Really likely to do it. They bring one back around just to keep the misdirection. You see Reese right there taking a step up field and all of a sudden whoo, Merriweather with real quickness getting into the secondary. Reuters checks the sidelines when he makes the signal. Now he relays it along the line and gets set. Whitehurst fires high and incomplete. 
That one too high that time. I know the crowd wanted interference, but uh, it did not look like the wide receiver had a shot against Kenny Scott as Michael Collins was the target. So here, there's the inside technique. Kenny Scott has already gotten beat once on this. This time he says, uh-uh, I ain't beating you. The ball went right over his helmet. I can see where Grant was a little bit upset with that call, but uh, not deemed catchable or not enough contact from the officials. Yeah, Michael Collins had a shot, didn't he? Yeah. 36 seconds left here in the third quarter. Michael Kane up in the box. The offensive coordinator looks at the secondary, makes the call. You can see Georgia Tech looking like they're going to blitz. Well, they do. With that pitch and run out of bounds here on the sideline. Merriweather, the ball carrier that time, and uh, Wilkinson, the linebacker, over for Tech. From the same play that they ran the shovel pass inside, they run the pitch wide to run a running play to the outside, almost like a sweep. Georgia Tech must stay patient. Keep people in front of you here. Field goal won't kill you. Kyle Browning is in for this third down play. It was Browning who slipped out against Wake Forest in overtime, caught the pass that won the game, and now they're moving him out. Basically a slot man out there to the left side of this formation. Obviously an outstanding receiver. Whitehurst looks away and dropped by Curry. It's the second big drop of the game. <laughs> Bam had one early for a touchdown. This one, Curry catches this ball. You're going to be first and goal from the 7, 8, 9 yarder, or he could take it all the way, and it's right on his hands when he gets that ball. It's going to force a field goal attempt. Stephen Furr will attempt to put Clemson ahead here with this 37-yard field goal. Cole Chasen, the punter, he's the holder on this play. He hooked one left already. Not a particularly good snap. Good job by the holder. It's 10-7. Boy, credit Chasen with a brilliant hold, and Tommy Bowden goes right to him. He goes right out to the holder, who reached back, grabbed it, and put the spot down. Yep. I held before, and that's the toughest one, because you go right across your body, and what happens is, you got to reach across your body. What usually happens is you don't hit your spot when you put the ball down. So the kicker has to adjust to where the ball is going to be and still kick it straight. And that was good patience on the part of Fur, the junior from Lakeland, Florida, too. He did not rush it. He waited for his holder to put it down. So a very calm looking field goal presence right there. And as a result, Clemson leads for the first time here tonight. Two big drop passes from Clemson has been their story for not scoring. One goal line stand for Georgia Tech has been the story on the other side of the field while they haven't put extra points on the board. This is Tiger. You haven't seen Reggie Ball do a lot of, uh, of the quarterback draws as explosively as he did early in the game. He's taken a lot of hits in this football game. I wonder if it starts to wear him down. Chad Dean, he's the kickoff man, the sophomore from Greenwood, South Carolina. Thomas and Clark, back deep for the Ramblin' Wreck. Thomas from the goal line. Down short of the 15-yard line. And a great tackle on that special team. An outstanding job by David Dunham, reserve back, linebacker. Yep, backup linebacker. He's played a little bit tonight in a lot of situations, but he's very valuable in that kickoff coverage. Now let's see what Reggie and the Tech offense can come up with here. He's got a running back, Daniels, who's rushed for 76. Big-time receiver, Johnson, who's caught four for 82 yards. He's a weapon on the outside, but Tech just hasn't been able to finish anything off. Reggie broke outside to the left. Strange-looking play, Gary. Yeah, I think this was another busted play. I don't know if the back slipped and fell down on the play, but Reggie was running for his life as the third quarter comes to an end.
Clemson up by a field goal. We'll come back with that fourth quarter after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We start the final quarter. Second down and 14 for Reggie and Georgia Tech here. Pulls straight back. Fires complete. They got the big fella. There is Johnson. Oh, man, what a receiver he's going to be someday. Is right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you know, one difference in this game, five sacks for this Clemson right. defense against Reggie. He's lost about 50 yards, and there's been a single sack by the Georgia Tech defense. And, it, and you would think it would be the opposite yeah. because Reggie's the mobile guy and Charlie's not. But it's been the blitz, the corner blitz, that has really thrown this game for Georgia Tech kind of out of whack for them. They haven't been able to defense that. I think they need to do what they did just right there. Drop back five yards. Don't try to be creative. Just throw the hitch, throw the comeback. Well, they got to keep the ball in Johnson's hands. He's had 99 yes. yards with five catches here tonight. He's the pressure point in this game, no doubt about it. And now Daniels pounds, and uh, things start to loosen up. But again, Georgia Tech has been impressive driving the ball here in the second half, but they haven't been able to finish it off. Clemson featuring that goal line stand. Second down and four. Johnson goes out to the left. Now here's that look with three receivers on the left, but this time the corner is not showing blitz on the short side, and Reggie's going to run in that direction. And a penalty flag is thrown by the umpire. And we all can repeat what that necessarily means, doesn't it? Absolutely. Guessing game that time call by Chan Gilly. He thought he was going to get the blitz, so he tried to run into it, and it wasn't there. Yeah, so as they uh, measured that off, it's time for the Pacific Life game summary. We mentioned the spirited goal line stand, and here it was, Garrett. First down up the middle, second down. This was the one that you thought he had great deflection by Ty Hill. Third down, a pitch wide. Now, you sure what damage you've seen right here? That was fourth down, actually. What you didn't see in that sequence was what uh, we all were thinking we would see, even the crowd thought they'd see, was Reggie Ball going wide with the ball with the run pass option. Now after that penalty, the ball is brought back inside the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and 14. Reggie Ball, sophomore quarterback, took over as a freshman for Georgia Tech last year. There's his numbers here. Touchdown pass to Johnson. Georgia Tech's only scores. They trail it by three. Here comes the blitz. He's down inside the 15-yard line that time. Leroy Hill, the great linebacker here in Clemson, and he was joined by Ty Hill off the corner that time. Now, Ty Hill, one of the great sprinters here at Clemson, and folks, when he blitzes, I mean, now, he didn't get there because Hill got there first, but I'm going to tell you, Hill was just all over him well, also. This, this is a complete bust by the Georgia Tech team. They turned an inside linebacker loose on that play. He's always accounted for by the offensive line or the fullback right next to the quarterback. You know, Reggie Ball said last time we played Clemson, half the plays we didn't block one guy. They're starting to get to that percentage again tonight. Leroy Hill has made 13 tackles for Clemson in this game. And uh, we've got a timeout here called by Georgia Tech. The crowd howling. They face a big, big third and 22 here. The sixth sack of the game, and that is, uh, you know, you start adding, putting 56 minus yards on your total offense. That's how you get down under 300 yards, even though you're moving the ball all night. Jack uh, Leroy Hill, good-looking linebacker. Yeah, but football wasn't his first love, Brent. In fact, he had quite a reputation when he was growing up in a little town called Haddock, Georgia, not for football, but for his horsemanship. He loved to ride horses. Says he started around age nine. His father, Leroy Sr., said he was pretty swift in the saddle until he was 16. I said, what happened? He said, he discovered girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame because a fella like that, strong and big, good horseman, he'd have made a heck of a bulldog. 
13 tackles and two sacks. He's having a big time game. He's, you know, a, he's a Buckus candidate. Yeah, he sure somebody is. you're going to hear about this year. He did not tip off that blitz at all. He didn't lean forward. He just looked very calm and patient, waiting for the snack, and trusted that at the snap he would get to the quarterback with his speed. Johnson now is split far out to the left. Thomas, the receiver wide to the right. Reggie looking for a bunch. Fumble snap, picked up by Daniels. Saves a turnover, but Tech will have to punt. Right now, Charlie Whitehurst on that uh, sideline for Clemson is saying, come on offense, we could put this game away right now with this drive. We're gonna get great field position. We get the ball at about the 40, 45, 50 yard line. It's our turn to help the defense take the pressure off them right here. Ben Hart back to punt again. Miller. And this is gonna be a short punt. Down at the 46 yard line. Good field position for Clemson here. With 12.42 left in regulation, they already lead it by a field goal. Now here in Clemson, South Carolina, some more of you folks have joined us. Clemson with the football. Leading by a third quarter field goal on first down, Yusuf Kelly. And he has started to come on as a running back, getting a little bit stronger as the game wears on here. He crosses the 40 yard line to the 39 yard line on a first down play following a short punt. Georgia Tech threatened early in the second half when we were deadlocked at seven. Clemson's goal line stand forced the Texters to give it up on that one yard line. And after that, Whitehurst, the son of David, have, was able to lead a field goal drive. And now Charlie with a golden opportunity here. Second down and four. And Whitehurst with that inside shovel pass, putting it in the hands of Maurice Curry. And, uh, you know, we've mentioned Charlie and his father. We asked him to talk about what his father taught him. The toughness thing at quarterback is, is something that's hard to prove. You know, you're not you're not in a physical. You don't play a physical game. So uh, when you when you get a chance to, and I'm not saying lower your head, but you know when 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 the rush comes and you get you get thrown to the ground, I mean you got to pop back up. And I think that's something I kind of learned from him. Very well, interesting point. Great advice. Just great advice. And you can only get that type of advice from somebody that played the position before. You know, that big advantage that Charlie has having somebody can tell him that. Yeah, it looks like a clip being signaled here by our referee, Ron Cherry. And uh, I think he might be double checking just to make sure he's got the number right here on the uh, Clemson yeah, yeah. offense. Yeah, he's pointing to the jersey. Must have been a wide receiver crackback, maybe. Clipping yep. on the offense. Number 18, 15 yards. Replay the down. Chris yep. Bayham, the uh, junior from New Orleans, guilty of that infraction. And uh, that brings it back near midfield. Second down here with 11.58. Costly, costly mistake. Yeah, absolutely. That was a first down right there on what, 32, 30 yard line? Whitehurst has not been sacked. Does just uh, get that, this one. And they want grounding. There it is. And yeah. Cherry calls it as uh, the Georgia Tech lineman, Daryl Richard, the freshman from Louisiana, was up barking, saying he is not outside the uh, the tackle box here by five yards. That's grounding. Daryl Richard was the highly, highly recruited pass. play. The penalty is lost today. Not to mention the yardage that was also lost yes. in this situation. You Richard could, comes around right there, there, number 95. Charlie does not get that ball to cross the line of scrimmage, and that's why he was called with intentional grounding. So this two huge plays for Chan Gailey, the one-time head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. In fact, the two years that he was there, Cowboys went into the playoffs both times. Then went down to Miami, offensive coordinator. Here's Whitehurst now. There's that middle screen. Curry with that great speed trying to break out of it. If he finds daylight, they won't get him, but he brings it across the 40 to the 39-yard line. So dangerous every time he touches it. Well, he's like shot out of a rocket, isn't he, when he gets that football? Big call here for Tommy Bowden. A little too far, 
to kick a field goal. They used a pooch punt early in this situation, but that was in the first quarter. I think they got to go for this play right here now. That was a 25 yard play, leaving them with four. Watch here. this guy right here. He's the money man. He's like the slash man. How do they try to get the ball to a playmaker? They need five yards. Stucky lined up. Whitehurst under pressure, fires incomplete. Georgia Tech takes it over at the 39. Oh man, if Tommy had it to do all over again, he'd have pooch punter with Whitehurst a second yeah. time. <laughs> he never looked right, left all the way. We'll take a break. Top of the hour. 81,000 plus here in Clemson, South Carolina, Dead Valley. And the Tigers lead Georgia Tech. No wild by a field goal, 10 7. But Tech with pretty decent field position here with 10.54 to go in the fourth quarter. Sophomore quarterback Reggie Ball at the controls. Daniels, the running back, has rushed for 81 yards. He'll try to get more. Not too much doing, but he got across the 40-yard line that time. And uh, so we've got Jack Aroot with the father of the uh, Clemson quarterback, Charlie Whitehurst. And here he is with David. David Whitehurst faced the performance of the Sun outstanding. We just heard from David, that, I mean from Charlie David, said you taught him the best thing, pop back up when you get hit to the ground. Well, if you can get up, you better get up. I mean, you've got to prove to your teammates that you're tough and you're the leader of that team. You've got to get up. How proud are you of the performance of your son in college? Well, I think he's played pretty well. I think he's got to keep making the plays when they're there and they're pulling for him. We'll come right back to you, Jack. Just stay right there. Second down. And after the fake, Reggie's in trouble. Going down. In the arms of Leroy Hill, we go back to Jack. What's, what's tougher for you, playing quarterback for the Green Bay Packers or sitting up here in the stands with your family watching your son play at Clemson? Jack, this is, this is torture. <laughs> it's, it's pretty tough. But uh, he's, he really has he's never given me a reason to second guess you know what he does on the field so I need to relax but that's my problem. Well we're going to let you relax and enjoy okay. okay? <laughs> All right Jack and David thank you. Very gracious. Give us a few minutes down and then it's agony. Sometimes he has to go off and pace around a little bit. Third down for Reggie and the Clemson defense has seized control and Reggie firing for Johnson short of him that time. He had to throw that ball before he was ready because a rush inside was not able to wait long enough and throw it and make an accurate throw. He just had to let her go. Big stand that time by the Clemson defense. Will it be Justin Miller that makes the play finally? I think you could read Jim Kaley. Phew, it's tough trying to move the ball exactly. on these rascals in orange. Benny Hart. Punt it again. Here's the ever dangerous one. Miller shakes the gunner. But Georgia Tech did a good job on that flank, and he's short of the 30 yard line as Nathan Burton, a, a senior from nearby Lilburn, Georgia, makes the stop. Bye -bye. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Michelob Amber Bob, Rich and Smooth, and Pacific Life offering insurance, annuities, and investments. Just a gorgeous scene. This is a terrific place to come see college football down here in Clemson, South Carolina. Meet some of your old friends over at the SO Club. <laughs> That's not so bad either. First down now, Whitehurst. Going for it, receiver was tripped up, but it might have been inadvertently. Crowd wanted interference, but he might have just tangled up with his feet that time, and uh, Kenny Scott was the corner with Grant. As a receiver, you're taught to try to close that space between you and the defender. Try to get as tight to him as you can. Top of the screen right there, and then go around him. Kenny Scott impeded him. He got his arm out on him, and that was a catchable ball. You could have called that one either way that time. Kenny Scott got him out with his arm, and uh, that was a really, really fortunate call for Kenny Scott. Second and 10. Inside handoff. Close to the first down. We take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook right now, Joe. 
Six sacks have been given up by this Georgia Tech team, and this is the formation. Three wide receivers, but watch this blitz. Georgia Tech has not been able to pick it up all night. Ty Hill comes around the corner, great speed. The only guy that's been picking it up so far has been Reggie Ball. That defensive assi assignment and blitz versus that formation has given Georgia Tech problems all night. Kyle Brownie was the last ball carrier. Now this is the toss to Merriweather in 37. He's got daylight. Look out. They're all catching. Put it on the scoreboard. Play that tiger rag and shoot that cannon. A 62-yard bolt by Reggie Merriweather. Every defensive coach's fear. You run a goal line defense in the middle of the field. You play, break the line of scrimmage. There's no safeties back there. Instead of a two-yard touchdown on the goal line, it's a 50-yard play from the bear. 17-7 Clemson. The young man was voted the team's most improved running back at the spring drills, and that's his first career touchdown here at Clemson. Reggie Merriweather from North Augusta, South Carolina, and what a thrill. 8-19, it's 17-7. Out of the end zone and coming out on the 20. Well, the NFL's in uh, full swing. Tennessee beat up on uh, Miami on a special Saturday. And, of course, a reminder, the NFL countdown tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Boomer and the fellows will tell you all the stories around the NFL as we get ready for another season. Then, of course, nearby on Monday night, Carolina and Green Bay. You get to take a shot at Brett Favre. He can do a few push-ups. <laughs> He keeps going, too. I like Minnesota, Tennessee this year. Minnesota, Tennessee. I like Minnesota. That's my dark horse. Team. All right. First down. Reggie Ball. Oh. Almost had one picked off on that far side over there by Miller. Well, let's uh, find out from John what's happening with the Longhorns and the Razorbacks. Town got a chance to be one of the next Steve McNair's. Dante Culpepper that time a quarterback. Just great, great physical ability. And I know he went to McNair's quarterback camp. Reggie Ball hands off to Daniels to the 26-yard line. I want to take a peek at this last play, and this was a touchdown saved by LeBron Thomas right here. Reggie Ball throws this play blind. Should have been offensive pass interference because Miller would have caught this, but he's got yanked all over at the same time. LeBron Thomas says, just give me a chance to not give up a touchdown. That was a good play by Thomas. He's a third down play for Reggie. Here is that formation. Will we get that blitz? From that guy right eight. there. Reggie's been sacked six times for 56 yards here tonight. Time out on the field is being charged to Clemson. Tell you to wear the properly in my they're going to lose a timeout here because of an equipment problem. And uh, Tommy said they might like a little explanation of that. Yeah, that was like way deep. So in the, that that was way deep in the tax code. That's one of those little <laughs> things. Right. Never think you're going to get and caught on, says, you know? Coach, you know, I don't know the mouthpiece the deal. I don't know. <laughs> and Tommy said, what's going on out here? <laughs> <laughs> He's like his daddy. He said, Dad, come it. You know, there's 80,000 people here. Equipment. 
that's a, a picky you little call there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> ACC conference game, and of course, uh, we got realignment headed your way. And uh, again, just like last night with Miami and Florida State, Clemson and Georgia Tech are going to be in uh, opposite divisions, but they will play each other every season. Now, the names of the uh, two divisions you can see have not yet been named. Boston College will be the uh, new addition next season, and then following uh, next season, they will have a, uh, a playoff game at the end of the year down in uh, Jacksonville Conference Championship. You think the uh, two conferences are fairly well balanced, or would you weight it one way more than the other? I, I think I'd rather be in Conference B here. Well, Virginia's playing pretty good. Georgia Tech gets some athletes. Virginia Tech can play a little bit. <laughs> well, look um, at A. Look at <laughs> 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 I already knew. I cheated. Ah, you told you're, me which one you thought. I know. You're, you're, you could run for political office. <laughs> you could be a senator. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it was. You saw Miller come over with that mouthpiece, and uh, he and Coach Bowden were talking about it. that. Was the problem down below? And uh, Reggie taking off is short of the first down, and now it is fourth down. And the Clemson defense, after that one very impressive drive, it all began with the goal line stand. The goal line stand turned this game completely around. Hasn't been the same. Yeah. Has not been the same since uh, Tech threatened on their first series of the second half also, and couldn't close the deal. I also get the feeling that Georgia Tech doesn't want to just line up, run a pass play and throw it, or line up and run a running play and think they can block it. They're trying to out finesse the Clemson defense, and right now Clemson is reading every play. Ben Art standing at the 14-yard line. Take another look at Justin Miller. A signal fair catch. Bobbles it. I was just going to say, if I had time, it's going to take a turnover to get Georgia Tech back in the game. That might have been the moment. We'll take a timeout. And we're back in Clemson. College football was close to religion to get down there, folks. Now the ACC strengthening up with the addition of Miami, Virginia Tech, Boston College coming in. With SEC year in, year out. Always one of the toughest conferences around. Merriweather needs 10 yards for 100. You know he's going to get the attempts to try to get 100 yards for this night. you got to reward a guy that does that well for you. An inside shovel pass to the dangerous one who was slammed down that time. And Curry taken by Chris Reese. Well, when you run this type of offense like uh, Clemson does, there's not much else you can do. All you have is really a shotgun and all the plays you run. And uh, it's like being a fast break offensive team in basketball. It's, it's hard to slow it down. Whitehurst doing a nice job of taking the play clock down. It's under eight seconds. Just milking it. Yusef Kelly. And there's a penalty. Flag fly thrown by the referee. Wait, he mistakes. So they'll march it off against the Clemson, and we'll check in uh, with Jack. Well, Brent, not everybody was convinced that Charlie Whitehurst should follow in the footstep of his dad and become a quarterback. In fact, his grandfather questioned his questioned Charlie's mom, Beth, when he was a youngster, said, I'm not sure. What if Charlie doesn't like the idea of becoming a quarterback? And Beth quickly turned to his, her, her father and says, Dad, you don't understand. Charlie loves football. And besides, Dr. Einstein's parents didn't tell their son not to study physics. How would he turn out? Did he invent anything? <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> I've never heard of the Einstein Jr. theory of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the wheel man to get the car. Right? <laughs> I, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> oh, this is second down, dad. 20 yards to go from Whitehurst to the Tigers. Far side. Working in underneath, back to the original line of scrimmage that time. And, uh, good at the hands of Curtis Bayham and Ruben Houston, the defender. 
Well, you're down by 10 points. You got to get a stop here. Georgia Tech needs to get the ball back right now. This stop right now. Then you get a drive. Probably have to do an onside kick, and it's the only real chance you have to win the game. So here's third down as uh, Whitehurst again. Here comes the blitz, the too. They are coming. Look at this inside technique by the corner right there, tipping it off. Here they come. Ooh, what a shot up high by Houston that time on the incompletion over there. Went after Grant, didn't he? Yeah, not, not a very good throw by Charlie again. That puts the game away. That's another opportunity for the quarterback to put the game away to receiver. You just lay that ball to the outside, and I know he was trying to do that. We all tried to do that, but he missed it high to the inside, and uh, Grant didn't come up with the catch. Jason, back to punt. Look at this. Look at that space. See how it forces the defenders to go wide, too. It takes too long to get there from that far away. They made an effort that time. Here's Houston. Got the first crease. Dances to the left. Speed closing in from the back as he was out of bounds over there, but a very, very fine return. Absolutely. Houston. Got a ball game. Georgia Tech still in this thing now. Great field position. Five or six minutes to go. Run some offense, and you got a football game. Time permitting now, the 50 Carolina post game report. John Craig and Aaron. Stay tuned for highlights and analysis for today's matchups. Tough day from the Big Ten standpoint as you look at it. Michigan going down there, losing to uh, Notre Dame. Ohio State had to struggle. Don't they uh, always? Came back against Marshall, pulled it out. Good looking defensive team this year. The ball puts it in the hands of a uh, sprinter out of the backfield, and that was Rashawn Grant. I believe that the, for the redshirt freshman from Tampa, that's the first time I think we've called his number tonight. Yes, it is. You know, uh, one one thing we want to thank, too, outstanding SIDs from these two schools up at uh, Georgia Tech and Atlanta, Allison George. Uh, she really uh, took care of us. We came in here late for this ball game, and she was helping, of course, here at Clemson. Nobody knew better than uh, Timmy Beret down here. So we want to thank both of those folks. They, they make our job and the crew's job a whole lot easier. Nice Second adjustment. Down. Two backs in the backfield to help with protection so they can throw the ball or run draws and screens. And they come back with Grant again. Have not been able to block the, the blitz spread out, so they brought the backs in to try to help Reggie Ball throw the ball. They're down. Throw for it, got it first down inside the 35 yard line, and there is Johnson going over 100 yards. The freshman in his second game for Great. Georgia Tech, one of the highly, highly recruited receivers down here in the Southeast. One of the times you really want to catch the ball in your body like that, you protect it, you keep the defender away, and shield it, the defender with the ball, your body against the ball. Back with the Running play and this is the big powerful back. Daniels twisting, battling. What a, what a great run by Daniels, who's closing in on 100 yards, and that passes it. 103 yards now, the official number. 25 carries. What a powerful look at run that was. He had two spins on that play, and you read your look at your scouting report on Daniels, and you watch tape of him. It's a something he really loves to do. When contact comes, he loves to spin away from it. Two of them on that run. Anybody's ball game here. Georgia Tech has a nice drive. Throw to Thomas in the end zone. One on one. He got it. He got a touchdown. Georgia Tech. Great concentration by Thomas. What was interesting before the play is that Reggie came all the way over him to him and to talk to him. And they set the stage for that pass one on one. Ty Hill had perfect position, but the ball was dropped over the outside corner, and Johnson did a nice job again of keeping his butt into the defender and catching it with his outside hand. I don't know, he might have caught that with one hand. Couldn't really tell. We'll take a look at it, but uh, there was a wonderful, 
wonderful catch as Travis Bell adds the extra point. It's a three-point football game again. Here is the ISO on number seven, and uh, Gary, we can watch this catch. Yeah, Ty Hill has perfect technique. He'll turn into the receiver now. Ball's in the air. Holding him off is one hand, reaches up, bobbles it, and it ends up catching it with one hand. That's a nice concentration on a bobble ball right there. Beautiful. Reggie knew he had one on one to the outside. He just wants to loft it up there. Perfect throw, throw it to the box, to the outside of the field, and just missed by Ty Hill. You really depend on your corners on that one if you're a defensive coordinator. You know, you gotta say, that's what we do. You put you in bump and run coverage, country, you gotta knock that ball down. Southern, and remember that first down pass that Charlie Whitehurst had over there. It was thrown slightly high, that might come back to haunt him. 436, Gary, would you uh, kick it deep and uh, oh, yeah. defense oh, yeah. take over here? time, that was too quick of a touchdown. They got plenty of time now. Well, you can see how close this series has been. Uh, last year, of course, it was a blowout. It was 39-3 in Atlanta, won by Clemson. And here tonight, back to being a tight game. Great adjustment by Chan Gailey there, putting two backs in the backfield to handle the blitz and just go down. Remember we were talking about, I, I felt that they were trying to finesse their way down the field. That time, Chan Gailey said, let's just throw the ball and see what happens. Clemson's had the advantage in the kicking. Just the pure kicking here tonight. I mean, their kickoff man has uh, hit the end zone, I think, every time in this game. Right? I mean, well, I know I remember Thomas playing yes. yeah. And, uh, you know, this is now a lot of pressure on the Clemson offense. Before, they could put the game away, but you had a little cushion. Right now, you're running out there saying, there might not be any cushion. If we give the ball back to Georgia Tech, we might not get it back again. Yeah. How much easier is it, though, at the 35 or the 20? I mean, basically, with that penalty of giving up 15 yards if you can get down to cover it, obviously. They gotta have two first downs, I think, that really feel good about themselves. Well, let's see what Whitehurst come up with here. Keeps it himself. Scrambling. Oh, first down. Picked up 12 yards on that run. So all you gotta do when you're that type of quarterback. Be able to just have a threat, get outside the pocket, fall forward. He almost fell forward for 12 yards there. Close games, nothing new for Clemson. A week ago, they pulled it out in overtime. First down and 10. play is stuffed and you know, we mentioned last week and I'll we'll show you how that coming. ended in overtime Charlie Whitehurst found Browning out of the backfield and that the winning touchdown in a 37-30 overtime victory so Clemson won and all already in the ACC Georgia Tech has been blitzing almost on every play now let's see if they do it again is it man-to-man -man coverage right out here to the outside? Or are they going to come again? Yes, it looks like they do. Right? Well, they're pretending to get out of it, but very difficult for a team to get out of a blitz at this level. Nope, they're coming. And there it is again. A lightning bolt. Touchdown Browning. The young man who ended the game in overtime a week ago. He goes 54 yards for the touchdown that has probably put this one away for the Clemson Tigers. Two long runs tonight. Brought up both safeties. When you bring up the safeties and you break the line of scrimmage, just like the short yardage one, you have problems stopping the long run. Got a celebration penalty, I believe, on that touchdown. We have a touchdown on the play. After the play is over, we've got unsportsmanlike like conduct against the scoring team. I didn't see it. Did I? I just, uh, looks like he ran in the end zone and jumped up and down to the fans. And I guess that's too much. So Browning, back-to-back -back weeks, gets the touchdown. 
some nice backup running backs here, don't they? Merriweather and Browning both have speed. And for the penalty will be taken out of the kickoff. Makes the margin 10 again. There's Kyle Browning. Saw the safety. See the safeties way up here right now. When they go to the outside thinking pass, you just break the line of scrimmage right here, and there is no one to stop the play. Very well blocked inside. Tommy Sharp, the center, really peeled back on the safety. And then all of a sudden, you're just getting to the secondary. Nobody there. Tommy Sharp, the center, blocks back, and boom, coming right at you. Let's see what he did here. Got into the secondary, got into the end zone and did the strutting with his feet right there. As you drag your feet, that's uh, a little bit too much for some people. So Clemson appears to have a comfortable 10-point lead at the 318 mark, and uh, we want to thank a lot of folks. We've had back-to-back Terrific ball games down in Miami and up here in Clemson. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Mike Pearl, with us in Miami last night. The senior producer of ABC Sports, Bob Toms. He was up in New York at the uh, command post calling some of the shots up there. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football, the producer of back-to-back -back games, Bob Goodrich, who lives down at Atlanta Way. He'll be driving home tonight. Directed by Steve By. Did an outstanding job, that young man from USC. Technical director, Randy Hardgrove. Associate producer Will O'Toole, associate director Brian Fay, excellent job. Broke in two new PAs, Juliana Barbieri, Dan Barr, Liz Scott also helped us out here in this having back-to-back -back games at different sites. Terrific job by uh, by all three. Thomas picks it up now on the move for Georgia Tech, and our production manager Christy Bravey. The technical manager, Mark Towie, and Barry Witching. So thanks to one and all for making it a uh, very enjoyable back-to-back uh, -back football games here on Friday and Saturday nights. The celebration penalty now gave Georgia Tech an opportunity to start this drive on the 50-yard line instead of the 35-yard line. So this could be another quick score. Instead, then you'd have to use the onside kick. Johnson, the dangerous one, is off to Reggie's right. Reggie looks back to the left side of the field. He puts it in Thomas's hands. That's a first down, stops the clock. It's 3 3 and just like Gary pointed out, here they come. So with 3 3 to go, Clemson leads Georgia Tech by 10 points thanks to two lightning bolts. Running backs here in the second half down the stretch of the fourth quarter. The first was Merriweather. He bolted for 62 yards. The second was Browning. Big tack one up for 54 yards. And a 10-point lead. Reggie trying to rally the troops. Oh, Moses picked off that time. Oh, baby. Justin and Miller just had a struggle night catching the ball. He's been bobbling Incomplete. punts, missing punts, missing interceptions. And missing his mouthpiece. And missing his mouthpiece. <laughs> 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 well, this one, you couldn't have an easier interception than this one. This this is one of the reasons may, they wonder why you're on defense when you start to scout a guy. That, that hurts you right there. You get pro scouts see that one. <laughs> Second down and 10. Second and 10 is a 30 Blitz again firing. Got Thomas. Thomas trying to get the first down. I think he's thrown down short of it over there on that side. The, the defender that time was Anthony Waters from Lakeview, South Carolina. Pick up of nine yards on the play. It'll be third and one. Third and short. Georgia Tech only has one timeout, so they have to hurry up. They they just have to get to the line of scrimmage and run. They get two plays to get a first down. There's the first down with Reggie on the quarterback draw, stopping the clock. About the 23-yard line with uh, 2.26 to go. Yeah, that's that's the good stuff. We, we just went through the bad stuff. <laughs> Very talented young man who tonight uh, just hasn't found his hands. Reggie trying to get a quick strike here for Georgia Tech. Keep them in this. 
dangerous pass in the middle. He was looking for Bilbo. Two defenders there for Clemson. And the time you throw to the middle into that kind of traffic, you're in the dangerous territory. Travis Pugh was injured Travis back in the Pugh first half. The free safety from Manning, South Carolina. A little bit slow getting up there. Tell you, you could have, you, you could kind of bait this play. If you went down the middle here and try to draw this safety over, watch Thomas going down the other side over there. Kind of look this way, safety cheats over. You could go back the other direction there and maybe get a, a cheap one. Let's see if they don't try to come back with the same play. Second down and 10. Looking in Johnson's direction. Going to go to the end zone, the big fella. Intercepted, picked off. That was Hill, and there's a flag in the end zone. You can see it right there. Yeah, it looked like he pushed off because Johnson didn't even have a chance to jump that time. Calvin Johnson turned around right away and looked at the official like, hey, you know, I mean, I'm, I'd like to jump. I'm six foot four here. Chan Gailey says it reminds him of Flexical Burris. That's the type of player that he believes Calvin Johnson can play. Lob pass. Defender knows he's got a big guy with him right here. It's Ty That's Hill again. Player. Pushes with his Three right hand. Away. You see Johnson <laughs> through the balance. Watch this. There's no question about this because what you do is you deny the yep. receiver an that. opportunity to make the right catch. There. Simple call. If you have contact and the receiver still has an opportunity to make the catch, then it's not interference. That was obvious as he pushed him away. And, uh, of course, in the NFL, the fellows that have a first and goal. But here, they'll march off the 15 down inside the 10-yard line. And it'll be first and goal from the 8-yard line and not the 1-yard line. Big difference here with two minutes to go in the ball game. Georgia Tech with one timeout remaining. They trail it by 10, 24-14. This backfield right here, this adjustment has helped Georgia Tech. In zone, and he got that one into the hands of the freshman sensation. Oh, he he it. It. For a moment, Johnson had it. He's a force. This guy is a force. I'll tell you, he, he would match up against anyone in college football. Throw him the ball, it's like a big rebounder. Look at this. Beautiful. Well, he might have had the ball. This was stripped after his butt was on the ground. Let's look at this. That's a pitch. That's a well, pitch. Right at the down. same time, his butt wasn't was down. His butt was down. Good, 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 good call. Good call. Good call by this crew. Second down. Reggie fires and uh, away from Thomas that time. He quickly looked back to that side. You, you would be tempted to stay with Johnson. Yeah, yes, it, he did well. Remember, Thomas made the nice catch too. But it, Reggie didn't have much enough time. You got the two extra block, blockers in there, but you don't have time to kind of look both sides. You got to pick a side because they were coming at him. I think I'd take my chance going to the right side with the six foot five guy, don't you? Absolutely. He's way out I go down here, six foot five. Give it a shot. Hill is winning. They've gone to the corner a couple of times. Reggie's looking for it. Wants him on the top. He caught the ball. That might be offense. That might be offensive interference. There's another flag. There's a touchdown. They signal touchdown. Was it holding by Ty Hill before he caught the ball? Both officials signaling touchdown down there in the corner now, and they'll uh, sort this out with 150 to go. Pass interference, number eight, and the defense. The results of the play is a touchdown by Wu. You can just feel the lack of confidence by Ty Hill right here. He doesn't think he can jump as high, so he's all over the receiver. Comes in the ball. Now, Ty Hill thought he was pushed. You wonder if the official didn't make the call before as having his hands on with the ball in the air. So what a turnaround a week can make in the fortunes of a football team. Back to within three at 150. If you go back to last week, it was fourth down for Clemson. And th that time, the call went in Clemson's favor. They got the break. Interference was called. It was very controversial. As you'll watch left side of your screen, that's what they called interference. 
Grant still had an opportunity to catch it, couldn't hang on, but interference made it first and goal. They tied and won in overtime. But here tonight, if you come to this sequence, they do not get the break. Hill is battling the freshman all the way. Johnson back to make the catch. The one foot comes down clearly. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. And now with 150, we're looking for the onside kick. Yeah, we, Clemson right now needs to grab the onside kick and pretty much be able to run out the game. Three or four opportunities for Clemson to win the game. Sideline pass by Charlie Whitehurst. The interception by Justin Miller. Ty Hill just stick his arm up instead of grabbing the receiver right there, but now they have to execute the onside kick. I want to say one thing. We have had several, several very tough calls in this game tonight, and this crew, referee Ron Cherry and umpire Tom Laverty, Terry Hudson, Van Gromont, Dr. Sterling Allen, Jim Coleman, and Tyrod. It's been an outstanding They made them all crew. right down here, didn't they? Absolutely. They were all right. Absolutely. Every one of those calls has been correct, and they have been tough ones. They'd be tough even in instant replay type calls, but they made all of them work correctly, I think. Belcher with the ball on the tee. The good hands folks are on. Let's see what Clemson can come up with. They've got 11 men, 10 of them up close. Line drive, oh, and was it was out of bounds. Poorly executed. It was off the hands of Stuckey. And of course, uh, that's a penalty when you kick it out of bounds if he didn't touch it. Right. The, the, the penalty flag came Clemson down. Now. Can take the, Clemson can take the ball. Let's see what they say. Yeah, Lee picks no the flag up. Right. Absolutely. Pick the flag up in that situation. Well, we got a moment tonight's uh, Chevrolet players of this game. Calvin Johnson. The big wide receiver target over there, and uh, Calvin seven catches, 116 yards. Leroy Hill with 15 tackles for Clemson. A recognition of their effort. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship. Fund. Also remember, Levon Thomas also had a big game for Georgia Tech. He also had eight catches for 100 yards. Both those big guys did a nice job for yes, Georgia Tech. Did. Now 149. Tech with one timeout remaining, and here he goes again. Same play that he opened the last series with. Charlie Whitehurst keeps it and slides for the first down. Or he stopped just short of it. They don't stop the clock. Did he just come up at the nine yard mark? Is he that good? Well, they're going to have to take That's a measurement. That's exactly what he did. They're going to have to take a measurement. I don't think he. That'll stop the clock. Either way, it's a big play by Charlie Whitehurst again. And that's what give it to the guy. Don't risk a fumble. Quarterback is used to handling ball in the situation and slide if someone's going to hit you. So if it's either second of inches or first down, either way, Clemson sitting pretty nicely here. Georgia Tech only one time out. Five hundred total yards for Clemson here tonight, and uh, man, what a what a nine-yard slide! Yeah, Keep that clock running. Two well, seconds ticked off before the officials signaled their timeout to measure it on that. It got it down to 131. Now he can run 25 seconds off the clock. It will clock will start. Whitehurst has now to time out by Gailey. Good timeout by Chan. Chan Gailey. knew what was coming. Absolutely. He did not want the free 25 run off. There's the advantage of having the head coach able to call the timeout, which he does right now. But now remember, the quarterback sneak for a first down, and the game is over. How about if you don't get the first down? How about if you take it and take a knee right now and come up with third down? Yeah, but wouldn't you rather have first and 10 than third and one? Well, if you took a knee immediately, could you come back on your next down and yeah, get it? But would you go for it on fourth down only hit three? <laughs> you got to take the I'm first down. I'm just asking you. Mr. Right? Mosberger did two games in two nights. We'll give you a pass on that one. <laughs> We're going to turn down first down. We decline it. We decline that first down. Keep the clock up. Let's check it down below. Jack, what do you think of all this, man? Well, I think you're both knuckleheads. <laughs> hey, listen, this is the last home game, fellas, for the next 35 days for Clemson. Listen to how far they're going to go. They're going to travel 2,857 miles between now and their next home game at Utah State. It's only the second, third time in history but they've had to travel that far in such a short period of time. Back in 1966, and back, oh, about close to when I was born, Brent, in 1951. Whitehurst goes straight ahead. 
Clock is still running. They'll have another measurement, but you can see the official's <laughs> foot. Linesman right there looks like it's going to be short, so they went with Brent's strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I got beat up over that play. <laughs> got to measure again. I feel kind of feel for Charlie there. They went in there and said, okay, now get the, get the quarterback sneak, get the first down. But, but if you fumble it, don't even come over to the sideline. So you, you're kind of like, do I hold on to it? Do I rush real hard? It'll be short. And now he will take 25 seconds off. Can't stop it now. Let's see, you, you can't risk it. Going going to 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 and made a good call. That was a good, very good call. Don't give up on a game until it's over. Well, now they'll run the, uh, the seconds off the clock, and uh, they'll get the first down here on third. It'll stop. If they and don't, what do you do? Run it out. <laughs> if they don't, you know what you do? You take a safety. You do the Bill Belichick deal, right? Come back in the end zone. Just be careful you don't fumble it going back exactly. to that end zone. That's one you've got to be really careful with that far away. Fumble? Did he make Boy, that? Boy, they're going for that scrum. They were battling down there. That ball might it have came come out. Loose. It came out. Georgia Tech indicating that they may have recovered it here. I'll tell you, that was a risky play. Handing off to a deep tailback on the third and inches. Yeah, you, well, you mentioned the New York Giants, didn't you? <laughs> Gonna be fourth down. Now you take another 25 seconds. I'll tell you what, you know what Clemson's gonna do? They're gonna take 24 seconds and call timeout and try to figure out what to do. Well, up by three, you don't rule the safety out. That's why and he did that's why taking a knee on that second down play. They didn't try to do that. They tried to pick it up. And it, it's, it's a little, get your heart beating a little bit. See, Tommy was saying, did you get that? Did you get that first down? Did you hang on that football? Not See, something that, happened. Yeah, they took a delay a game. They didn't, even, they didn't care right there. They were going to punt the ball. It's amazing, isn't it? That was inches from a first down. And this is what you're going to have to do. Either punt or run your guy for a safety. Now, you ain't going to run this number 30 for a safety. I'm telling you that right now. I better put number one in there. Exactly. <laughs> now that, remember they got that kind of they got that different weird punt formation. formation. Now they spread the field. And, and, and if the anybody's guys. ever going to get there, Jason's back. 23 seconds. Pressure on the snap, the catch. It's oh, a look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, Loose ball. Hunter goes out. But can they get it? Sure. Change of possession. The going to stop. Oh, my goodness. And Georgia Tech is going to be able to snap. Georgia Tech is going to be able to go for the win. There's a lot of pressure. I can't believe it. Jeff Rigsby, your heart goes out to the to the long snapper. Oh my goodness! 16 seconds. They go more than once into the end zone. That ball didn't go seven yards back. It's a nice job just to fall into play. Now you're going to throw a fade to the end zone. You're going to get two shots to win the game. Chan Gailey, the play of the game so far. You know, will they go for overtime or will they go twice for the win? Goes for the win. Johnson got it. Touchdown. Georgia Tech. Touchdown. Oh, mercy. A miracle in South Carolina. Never give up on a game. goes out to that young man right there. The the Meanwhile, on the other side, Johnson now with 127 yards tonight and three.
count of three touchdown passes. I, I must believe now that the whole Clemson staff, players are just in total shock. Absolutely. As to what just happened. I mean, it just... It's stunning. And this is like, have, listen, I've seen a lot of different yeah. games, but I've never seen one in like this in my life. And, it, and this isn't like, uh, you know, tossing away a baseball game. You, you don't play a lot of college football games. You lose a game like this that is in the win column, it's devastating for you. And again, I go back to what Gary said as they tack on the extra point here with 11 seconds to go. Now, obviously, Clemson will get a return. Jan Gailey made the play of the game when he called that timeout on the sideline so that Clemson could not quickly run off the first 25 seconds using his last timeout. Now, let us watch Johnson go to work here on Miller. Yeah, Justin Miller might be 5'7", okay? Other guy's 6'5". Look at that. And that's what you have when you have a weapon like that. And I'm very surprised Clemson didn't put two guys out there. I mean, what do you, you just didn't fight the throw out there. A field goal only ties the game. You have an opportunity one-on-one -on -one to give it away. Second and inches. Third and inches. And fourth, a dribble back to the punt. Have you ever heard Brett Musburger be quiet? <laughs> I'm stunned at what I just looked at here. I hope there's more than water in that one. That's tough to swallow. Back deep, we have Aries Curry and Justin Miller. Thinking off with the number 16, Kyle Belcher. 11 seconds to go. Remember, there's all that speed back there. Got the celebration play. Now, this one should be kicked hard down the middle to the upbacks. Another fade pass. This has been the whole offense for Georgia Tech. There's really been four of those tonight. Remember the first one around the corner? Thomas caught one with one hand, and now two there. Four jump balls for four touchdowns for Georgia Tech. Now we know why that young man is so highly recruited. Kick it hard to the upbacks. Perfectly done. Into the hands of that speed. And Curry trying to get the corner. He's got the midfield now. To the 30-yard line. Three seconds. Amazing. Three seconds. They're going to get a crack at it with Whitehurst. Amazing. Talk about a bunch of guys limping home. This is like uh, Vanderbilt finishing up the, the, the British Open here. He doesn't know what to do. He's limping in. Both teams in shock. That was a 49-yard return by Curry, the speedster. And it gives him a crack at the end zone here on the last play from the 31-yard line. And the extra point was huge because they can't go for a field goal. Now, you know this ball's going to go to Kevin Grant, number 88, who caught the jump ball last week. Johnson Grant's got that great size. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of like stunned having watched that. All the results of this snap. Yeah, that was the end of the nightmare. Remember, it was second and inches and third and inches that they did not convert on any one of those plays. So there's a lot of guys out there in offense. Now, what's this? They, what, what are all these guys? Go out there and help. Put an extra guy out there. Please, that's a mismatch. He's five foot seven. Now, Georgia Tech will put James Butler, the free safety, back inside the five yard line. I put number 21 back there. Johnson, go back there and bat it down. The only problem with this is he <laughs> kind of a foul down there in the He's so jacked up right, right. now. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to put a tall guy back there. <laughs> Look at this. They didn't think they'd be praying for him, did they? <laughs> oh, golly. I guess that's how we all watch games, huh? Yep. The <laughs> Denver know. Now we'll see what uh, Charlie Whitehurst can come up with here. He's thrown for 275 yards tonight. One touchdown. Curry, the speedsters out to the right. Grant is down to the bottom of your screen. That's the, that receiver off to the quarterback's left down there. They've got uh, three receivers bunched out to the right. 
He'll at least be two on one to the bottom of the screen. Safety's in the middle of the field. He can go either direction. He launches it toward Grant in the end zone against Scott. Ball is incomplete. Game over. A miracle victory for Georgia Tech. The hydraulic lift brings both goalposts down. They were fearful that the Tech students might come up to rip the goalposts down. Let's go down to Jack Aru. Jack, unbelievable. Coach, tell me about that, that timeout you took. I'm telling you, the thing that happened is we just did, at the end, we just were trying to find ways to get the ball back to score. Our kids did such an amazing job. Have Jack. you ever been in any kind of a no, game with this kind I've of reversal? Been, I've never been in a game like this. This is unbelievable. Well, don't we have great kids? You certainly do. Go celebrate, Thank Coach. You. The sequence that had to happen for this play to get the last play to win the game was almost incredible. Clemson had to do four things wrong for this play to even be tried at the end of the game. What a special talent that guy's going to oh, be. Oh, Johnson's an unbelievable receiver. I mean, that's just a freshman against a veteran defensive back. Back to go to Jack. Reggie Ball, congratulations. I guess that's why you play 60 minutes. Yeah, we said all week. Despite the whole 60 minutes, we will come out with a win. And we never gave up going by 10, going down by 10 and late in the game, man. We just kept fighting, man. Tell me about when Coach called that timeout. What were your emotions on the sideline at that point? Did you think you were gonna get a chance? I didn't think I was gonna lose. Period. I didn't I didn't care what went on. I didn't care if it came down to one second on the clock. I knew I wasn't gonna lose. Congratulations, man. And congratulations go out to uh, Reggie Ball, that entire Georgia Tech team. No quit here tonight, folks. And ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. A reminder, the Monday night, join Alan John up the road to see some premier Monday night football. The Packers take on the Panthers. Once again, a miracle victory for Georgia Tech. One they'll be talking about for decades. 28-24 over Clemson. So for Jack Root and Gary Danderson, I'm Brad Musburger saying so long, everybody. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television.